Good morning and welcome to Munich. We are in the capital of Bavaria. The sun is shining, we're in the Olympic Stadium and the crowd is filling up. Where else would you rather be? Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here to talk you through this morning's semi-final. Uh, Mike, we've been here in Munich since Thursday. It's a fabulous city. It really, really is. It's an absolute honour to be able to come to a World Cup in such an amazing city. Not only is it a climber city with so many great gyms, there's the crags nearby that make you know, make Munich a special place to come and host a World Cup. You've got the crags of the Tyrol in Austria not far away. The Frankenjura is right there as well. And it makes for a very, very, very special place to be. And just the town itself, you can see from the video there, just beautiful parks, beautiful city, uh, and great, great, <laughs> great food and beer, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it really is a fabulous city, but of course the culmination of our few days is uh, today. It is the final here in Munich. It's one of the biggest events in the IFSC calendar. And what a venue for it, when the Olympic Stadium, the crowd, I mean, even yesterday, the qualifying crowd was absolutely enormous. It's, it's really one of the highlights of our year. No, absolutely. I think the hype online just leading up to this World Cup has been huge. And if the, the people who designed this stadium in, in the well, late 60s, 1972 Summer Olympic Games venue, if they could see what the organisers here have achieved, I think they'll be absolutely buzzing. It is a very special place to have a World Cup, like I say. And uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to that atmosphere just building throughout today. You can see the crowd behind us. It's just, it's just it's crazy here. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, if you can't get excited for this, I think you're in the wrong game. We've got uh, the regulation 20 men and 20 women through to the semi-final. 40 of the strongest climbers of the world. One thing to point out, a few familiar names might be missing. Team Japan didn't bring anything like their full complement. We're actually missing four previous World Cup winners, all of whom uh, hail from Japan. Akio Noguchi, Miho Nanaka, Rei Sugimoto and Tomoa Narasaki uh, amongst the missing party. But we were chatting to a few of the athletes yesterday and general consensus, uh, quite rightly, was that you can't let that affect your own mindset and you can't start to think, well, maybe there's a few spots in the final freed up. You've just got to concentrate on your own performance. Yeah, I had a really good chat with Andrzej Perhat from the Slovenian team. He's been doing really well this year. And we really tried to delve into the psychology of it yesterday as to what do you do when potentially the gate is open with so many Japanese missing? Do you, do you kind of walk into the competition thinking, right, the door's open, this is my time to shine? Or do you just go out there and focus on the boulders? And he interestingly said, let's be honest, all you can do is compete against the boulders themselves. Let the results sort themselves out. So don't overthink it. Just go out there, try your best on the boulders and, and just see what happens really. Yeah, well, uh, Angie and most of Team Slovenia had a superb day yesterday in the qualifiers. Six Slovenian women through, it's three Slovenian men, and here is the best of the action. The legendary Olympic Stadium in Munich is host to the fifth IFSC Boulder World Cup of the season. The men had their qualifying first, and 2015 Munich winner Alexei Rubsov clearly enjoyed the boulders in Group B, topping four of them and securing a semi-final spot. Adam Ondra had to fight for his place in the semis, but got there comfortably in the end, as did last year's Munich winner, Gregor Vazonic. It's always been great to come back to Munich. Um, this year, even better because of the last year. Um, I did feel kind of like, I, I felt some pressure coming back, but once I started climbing today, it felt great again, so I'm happy to be back. Zhong Wanchon also did what was required. Four tops and four zones in Group B being enough to see him through. <music> 2018 season champion Yerne Kruder also went through, as did local hero Alex Megos, fourth in Group A with three tops and all five zones. He missed out on the semis in both Chinese World Cups a few weeks back but firmly made amends in Munich, his top of men's A3 being particularly impressive. <music> Albon Levier was the sole Frenchman into semis, while Sean McCall of Canada missed out narrowly, finishing 21st despite this top of Boulder 2. Fresh from a podium spot in Wujiang two weeks ago, Jakob Schubert secured a semi-final spot, as did Tomoaki Takata, who's hunting a second appearance in a final this season. The women climbed at 5pm, by which time the venue was packed, something Fanny Gibert clearly enjoyed. 
climbing in front of this crowd was crazy. For qualification round, it felt like finals. Just exactly the same. It's good to be home climbing in Europe and the route setting is amazing in Munich. A lot of different boulders and a lot of very demanding problems. Like a lot of accuracy on body position and everything. And I really like this kind of climbing. Fanny's compatriot Julia Shanodi clearly liked it too, topping four boulders in Group B, while Katja Kadic got three tops in Group A, enough to see her safely through. <laughs> Jessie Piltz kept up her good bouldering form with four tops and five zones. In the three semi-finals she's made this year before Munich, she's gone on to make the final. <music> Berich Feiger couldn't find a way to semis, but her and Jesse's compatriot Mattia Putzi and Johanna Ferber both went through. Anya Garmbrett, meanwhile, did what she always does by qualifying with ease. She had to work for it, though, and seemed to relish the challenge of some harder qualifying bowlers. Number four, in particular, looked brutal, and she took a few attempts, but did it in the end, as Alma Bestvarta got number three done in front of a very loud and enthusiastic crowd. Yeah, there is the crowd here in Munich, venue filling up very quickly. Uh, Mike, we only touched on it briefly, but the crowd was even bigger than this yesterday for the qualifiers. We are expecting a sellout and this place to be absolutely packed within the next half an hour or so. Yeah, yesterday was quite interesting, really. I think I've been to this Munich World Cup four or five times over the years. This is actually the 10th Boulder World Cup here in Munich and year on year as climbing seemingly just explodes into kind of the sporting world really the crowd yesterday was was huge and the atmosphere in this arena you know, we, it's so iconic this venue we've talked about it already but the just the way that the roof is set up and the just the acoustics and the cheering and you know it's just great <laughs> and they'll be making a lot of noise when that second lady out Afra Honig comes out she is a local Münchner and uh, you can see first out Matteo Pertzi she's the uh, first of four Aust uh, Austrians uh, through Big shout out to Van der Mikhailkova as well. Good result from her. Uh, Vita Luke and the first of six Slovenians to appear in the women's semi final. A bit lower down the order. You can see there Camilla Moroni, young climber with a very promising future, delivered a big result yesterday in the qualifiers. And then Kaci Kadic, Mia Kramble, Evgenia Kazbakova, who had a couple of unlucky results already this season, had a very good result yesterday in the qualifiers. She's safely through. And then Emily Phillips. Julia Shanodi continues her excellent bouldering form. We've got Luchka Rakovic, Fanny Gibert, Oskar Rapusic, and Janja Garmbrecht out last. Definitely a Slovenian onslaught at the top of the uh, women's list there. Uh, Britain will have the first climber out on the men's side, Billy Rydal, and then Misha Pakolruaz, who had a very nervous wait yesterday. He set his score quite early on and just had to wait. He was 10th in his group for seemingly hours. Safely made it through. Albon Levier, the sole French representative in the men's semi-final and the names become increasingly familiar as we get a bit low down Jakob Schubert, John Wonchon and Yerne Kruder making up a heavyweight final three in that first half of the men's semi-final uh, and in the top half Yu Fei Pan, the young Chinese climber who is producing good result after good result right now and then Alexei Rubsov, 2015 winner here in Munich will be out followed by Alex Megos, Yuji Inoue, Tomoaki Takata and then Adam Andre, Jan Hoyer, Gregor Vazonic, Andrzej Perhark and Yoshiyuki Ogata. As I mentioned earlier Japan didn't bring some of their big hitters no less than four previous winners from Munich uh, missing but they've still managed to get 
good number through on both the men's and the women's sides. A very impressive performance from the Jap Japanese team. Yeah, you really feel with the Japanese team, one person stays in Japan, boots are filled instantly by another hero. It's the depth in their team is, is incredible, really. It's brilliant. Uh, and Slovenia, excellent day for them yesterday. And of course, thinking about Janja Garmbret, there is a, a clean sweep shaped elephant in the room. She's won the first four World Cups of the season. In fact, she's not just won them, she's absolutely dominated them. Never really looked like being beaten over the course of a weekend. And a lot of people now wondering whether she can become the first climber in IFSC history to clean sweep a season, win every World Cup in a discipline in a season. Yeah, just seeing Yanya yesterday after the qualifiers, she was the only climber to top five in her group yesterday. The other group, there was uh, one climber with five tops as well. But the way that she performed yesterday was like a semi-final or a final round. You know, we said the crowd was huge. To be honest, I think 50% more were here to watch Yanya for the first hour yesterday in qualifi qualifiers. She really is staggering. You know, there's, 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 there's not many words left to describe Yanya. We all know that. And just watching her yesterday fighting on women's four boulder yesterday. There's some great videos online, Instagram. Go and check them out. Um, it was like she was trying to win a World Cup there yesterday. And you can see with Yanya, there's no lack of fire there still. She's already won the overall for the season. She's looking for the clean sweep. And there seems to be no lack of motivation. It's, it's quite staggering. She was fired up yesterday. She came off the mats with a big grin on her face, bounced into the venue with a climbing bag over her shoulder. And uh, I had a, a quick five minute chat with her and she was, she had a lot of fun on those qualifying boulders and I think really relished the fact that the setters gave him a big challenge. It was undoubtedly the hardest qualifying round the women have had this season. Yeah, and I think that came through into the men's competition as well. There's been a little bit of chat sort of online on the different channels about the qualifying boulders. Uh, some of the competitors asking for harder boulders. So you don't, you know, it, it's been a case with a couple of competitions this year that you effectively cannot f afford to make a mistake on the qualifiers. Uh, flashes of key, uh, but now yesterday they ramped it up a bit and they really did have a, a perfect set, I would say, um, all the way through men's and women's competition. Uh, a lot of the athletes going away with uh, happy faces and, and some la lack of skin, that's for sure. I don't necessarily have a problem with the easy bowlers. I know that sometimes they get a bit of a hard time online. Personally, I think if you have easy bowlers in the qualifiers, you're testing people's ability to not make mistakes on relatively easy bowlers. And then if they make it to the semi, they get a different type of challenge. And again, in the final, uh, there does seem to be a fairly direct correlation between uh, people not making the semi-final and not liking the setting, <laughs> I would say, if I was being sceptical. But uh, yeah, for sure, at times they have been a bit too easy in the qualifiers. And I think yesterday the root setters gave the, the climbers a real challenge. And certainly in the case of Yannis, she relished it. She said Boulder 4 was one of the holdest, hardest boulders she's done this year. Yeah, that's what we want to see. And I totally agree, you know. Uh, that's the game. Sometimes you have to have a flash round, sometimes it's a really hard round. You have to rise to the individual challenge on that day. Uh, and, you know, we all know the, the people on the podium love the competition. Everyone else thought it was rubbish. You know, that's, the, that's how it goes <laughs> in climbing. You know, that's a bit of a generalization, but you know what I'm trying to say. No, of course, um, the guy who won gold liked it a bit more than the guy who got silver, and he liked it a bit more than the guy who got bronze. <laughs> that's, that's the nature of, uh, of competition. So first two climbers are ready to go. Matteo Putzi of Austria. She was on the podium in the Austrian Championships last year. Billy Rydal of Great Britain is first out. We start on the right-hand side of this Munich wall and then we're going to work our way left throughout. Just the crowd absolutely on fire already here in Munich. The anticipation is really, really high here. Men are going to start on the far right-hand side of the wall alongside the women. Women are on these big red x cult fiberglass volumes and the men on a have a nasty selection of small crimps in the wall and some interesting body positions. Let's see how these first boulders develop. Billy Ryder actually got through yesterday. He was sitting in 21st position for quite some time and ended up being an appeal against whether he secured the fifth zone hold or not. The appeal was successful, knocked out Sean McCall and Billy went through. Such a tough game when you're sitting in 21st position. And this men's boulder, we saw the root setters playing with this uh, really until the last minute just making little tweaks, testing, and there's a variety of methods to do this first move. Yeah, I think throughout the round, we're gonna see actually some, just some really hard pulling with some unique body positions. And I think both men's and women's one kind of, uh, yeah, are gonna be of that vein. Women's one, probably the easiest one of the round, seeing a good start here already. Um, 
yeah, big move around the corner, classic sort of blunt to ret that the root setters love to kind of throw the climbers around the, around the bend. Uh, a slightly blind move around the corner and a bit of a mantle to finish. But in the men's competition, like you say, tried a few different methods available here, but it's mostly revolved around a set of quite bad feet and the zone hold further on. It's this awful set of really small screw ons you have to hold as a pinch. A good start from Matteo Putsi, already secured the zone. She uh, secured it on her second attempt. Climbers have got five minutes to attempt each boulder. It's five minutes on, five minutes off, and therefore if you can get a boulder done quickly, you really do earn some, some very welcome extra rest. No sign of tops just yet. Well, I think the temperature here is, is going to be relevant here today as well. Uh, we are sitting under this glass roof. We are in direct sunlight. I'd say it's pretty warm. It's just above sort of 20 degrees at the moment. I think the, the, the wall is actually in the shade because the sun is behind it currently, but it will be working its way around. I think temperature could become an issue on these holds, so I think the root centers have gone for more in-cut holds than less, I think, just to try and counteract that a little bit. Uh, but the temperature on the wall for the guys at the moment is okay, because we are still relatively early in the day. Just explain what you mean by slightly more in-cut holds. You, you're saying they're trying to take friction out of it well, I think to an extent? Yeah, if it gets really hot, the last thing you want is a load of slopers that are going to get covered in chalk and just get hotter and hotter and become virtually impossible to climb through the round. There's Again, there's a lot to chat about sort of uh, the upside down results and climbers coming out first, having the best conditions and whatever else. So sometimes if it's really hot, it does make sense to use some sort of more positive in-cut holds. But, you know, you can't set every boulder as an in-cut crimp because that's not a fair round and wouldn't be very interesting to watch, let's be honest. So there is, of course, there's loads of different types of holds out there, but sometimes those elements can come into it. And we've got a very aesthetic set of boulders here. Our chief route setter is Chris Danielson of the USA. He'll also be setting in Vail uh, for the final bouldering World Cup of the season. And uh, particularly physical looking round for the men as well. Yeah, very powerful set of boulders and I think quite a hard set of boulders as well. Um, so we, I don't think we're going to be looking for lots of people with four tops going through. Um, there's a Later on, we'll see there's quite a, a decent sized, powerful jump with a bit of coordination in it as well. So, to get lots of tops in a few attempts would be, yeah, I don't want to say too early because it's virtually impossible to say, but I, you know, I think we could be seeing a few tops, but not tons and tons. Yeah, I'll, I'll be impressed if anyone on the men's side can get four tops, but uh, I've been impressed many times before <laughs> and I'm fully expecting to be again today. Uh, here's Matthew Putsi looking at that jump. She's perhaps not fully committing her body weight over to it. Yeah, she's so just coming up shy on the left-hand side of that hold. It does get better the further right you go. So you can actually see it top left of your screen at the moment. It's quite a decent in-cut hold. Billy Ryder, on the other hand, just trying to figure out this bottom section. He's sort of in between waving his right foot out and just trying to find that foothold. It is a very, very flat, round, sort of penny-sized foothold. Uh, potentially wants to do a little bit more with his hands through that section, maybe a little bit more matching. Um, a really off-balance move, and we see that a lot for these competition climbers. Hard moves interspersed with timing elements. And I wonder whether that will be, uh, be it for both. Billy keen for another go. You'd suspect time-wise this is only a really an attempt on the zone for Billy, but could still be vital. That looked a little smoother, but sadly time up. Five minutes is completed. Uh, Munich's very own Afra Hernig gets her semi-final underway. Misha Pekolraz, resident of Innsbruck, about as close to a home World Cup as he's going to get this year, is on the mats as well. And as you said, Mike, the temperature increasing here. We've got the roof on the Olympic Stadium. It's a glass roof, so at times it can almost exacerbate the conditions. Uh, it can make it slightly humid in here under this big glass roof. Yeah, I was trying to figure out yesterday, I wonder if you can get sunburned through a glass roof. I was, uh, I was, that's actually quite prudent for right now, <laughs> I really hope not. Uh, but the venue filling up, people are still streaming through the gates, they only opened the gates at 11 o'clock, and uh, there was quite a queue to get in then, people streaming in to fill the venue up. As I say, we are expecting a full sellout, certainly for the finals, and it would look like it's going to be pretty close for the semi-finals as well. Four minutes remaining for these climbers. Looking forward to seeing Misha. He had a couple of nearly results in China. And that's how you do that first move. So now he's heading out to the zone. Now the zone is that crimp there. He's also got his thumb, his right thumb, he did have, uh, on another tiny hole. 
you can get a lot of weight through that right foot. You can see there, the holes he's holding onto are absolutely tiny, but if you can get the weight through your foot, you can get, you know, all things being relative, quite a comfortable position uh, to then move out to the right. Just had to wince there as he fired off that little, of course, barely a crimp, to be honest. When he closes his hand, the hole disappears under it. That's how small it is. But interestingly, he was sitting on the right toe there. Uh, that is sort of a dual texture hold in many ways because there's friction in the black section and then it's a wooden sort of varnished exterior. Thinking the classic body position on that move for a match of that sort, you've really got to nestle down on the heel and just sink the body weight nice and low to be able to go across almost hands free. So Afra Hernick's had a few looks at that start on women's one. It's a slightly awkward start. Your feet are kind of tucked in uh, underneath. You, can, you can't quite see them from the starting position. And you can see she's just having a few issues getting started. She's just about to pull back on for another go. There is uh, Misha and there's Afra. That's a bit more like it. Yeah, just the first move's actually trickier than it looks with a little right toe release, sort of a a position, a starting position where you get in but it's hard to get out and, and stay on the wall. But this little cross through method for Misha, really nice off the starting hold, slightly different to what we saw from Billy Rydell. It's be interesting to see what he does with the right foot this time, see how bad that zone crimp is. It works really well as a farm, but this time he's got the heel and he's starting to sink the weight low and work his way across. When we saw the root setters working on this bowler, that's how they did it, they got the heel underneath and Misha had his toe the first time, this time he's really sitting on top of that heel. And this looks much more promising and just pops as he begins to stand up on it. That section of the wall that the zone hold is on is actually slightly overhanging. So as you begin to stand up, the feet and the hands just start to feel worse and worse as you inch your way up the wall. I think what Misha's just realised there is putting the heel down. is It's one step forward but two steps back in many ways because you, it helps you to get through the zone. But once you're through the zone, standing up off a heel is much harder on the top of the legs than it is to stand up off a toe. And you can see him really trying to power down through the heel to try and get the stand-up method because the handholds really aren't really helping him at that stage. It's really interesting to get down to the minutiae detail of these, these boulders straight away. Yeah, I think we were both uh, too excited to hang around in the hotel, so we were in here hours ago looking at these boulders. Uh, really enjoyable to study them so closely and finally see the climbers unleashed on them. I really do feel we're in for a treat in this semi-final. A root set as assure us we're in for a treat in the final as well, but first things first. At 5 p.m. at Munich time for the final, by the way. So Misha pulling on again. He seems to have this nice coordination move pretty sorted. He's looking very solid on that right hand. And then he uh, creeps out to that zone, so he's got the toe on it now, and I'd imagine he'll, uh, now he's going for a, some big jump, redefining optimism, I like his thought process, but it is an awful long way up there, and they're not great holds you're going for. Yeah, I mean, you really have to question that as, an, uh, as a method, really, you know, sometimes you've got to think outside the box, through setters do make mistakes, but very rarely, seven of them here have been working since Monday, if they could see that there was an option to go straight up, I think they would have tested it. So potentially, like you say, a potentially wasted attempt there. Afra Hernick still having a few issues with those lower red volumes. She's pulling back on for another go with 20 seconds to go. Misha has got time to top this ball a bit. They're quite intricate moves, these. It's good to see such a close-up of how bad these screw-on holds are. Gives you an idea of how good that foot is, that his hands are actually completely off anything for a while there. And it's uh, quite helpful thing if you had another five minutes. Misha Pekolraz might have made an even bigger dent on that boulder. As it is, he has to settle for his own. He's the first climate to get on the scoreboard. Uh, on the men's side, Billy Rydell not able to find the zone, and he's back out onto boulder two. Victoria Mezhkova of Russia, next climber out. Tim Royster of the Netherlands uh, gets underway on men's one. Matteo Putzi closest to the camera on women's two. Series of black holes. Starting out on two enormous ones, and then the last big holds for a while. It's a really aesthetic looking boulder, you can see it there on the left hand side of your screen. Tiny crimps on the right, you'll have your, the climbers will have their hands on the right, feet on the left. Dual texture hand holds, dual texture foot holds. Really interesting looking boulder, I think it's one of those boulders where if 50 people did it, they might do it 50 different ways. Just in the background there, you can see Billy Ryder's actually stuck the first move of men's number two. Our first look at that as we just focus on Tim through the first section of men's number one. Hopefully we get a good look at men's number two. It's got a pretty funky first move. And uh, Billy's made a good fist of it already, so it'll be interesting to see what the Rootset's opinion on was that was on that. They thought that was a particularly hard first move. And 
Tim. Yeah, yeah, Tim is very smooth through that first section. Nothing like as dynamic as Misha, but looked in control. Yeah, Tim's a pretty big dude overall, <laughs> I would say. In, you know, you know, from a comp competitive athlete's point of view, he's still under six foot, but uh, one one eighty or whatever that is uh, centimeters. Uh, but he's one of the bigger guys. Uh, but he's really nestled in on that hill at the moment. This looks really hopeful from Tim. He's going up for that sloper on the array. He's got a good hand on it. It's that desperate stand-up position off the heel there. It's really easy just to sort of, as you push up, to slowly sink out at the same time. That was Billy, yeah. That first move, I have to say on men's two, looks absolutely savage. He's not having too many problems with it. Yeah, it's sort of like a jump over into a right-hand Gaston. As you jump over, your foot plants onto the wall. And as it plants, you've got to swing again out to the left and your foot hops and that plants back on the walls. Really interesting little first couple of moves there on men's number two. And women's number two, these opposing shoulder moves. Side pulls around the wrong way, sometimes referred to as a shoulder hold. I also should point out by the way that they are dual texture holds, the start holds on there, so the outside of those volumes uh, are essentially uses. Matteo was pretty much on the limit of where the good friction is there. If you're wondering why she wasn't standing on top of the starting holes, that's why you wouldn't be standing there long at such as the, the level of friction. You can see in, just in the bottom of your shot there, she was just obscured by a photographer, Melissa Lenev. It's really good to see her back. She's been testing slash setting for the last few days. Now Billy for, through that first shoulder move. Yeah, quick bit of jargon busting early. Let's get it out of the way. A shoulder hold sideways side pull around the wrong way also referred to as a Gaston we tend to use those phrases sort of now and again keep watching long enough <laughs> you'll pick up the terminology climbing's got some great ones not all suitable for <laughs> midday live streams <laughs> so Tim again safely secured the zone we saw Misha up here the, the key was in getting any higher than that. Uh, Tim just opting for the toe this time rather than the heel option and as we saw with Misha just trying to jump directly up. This side of the wall for the diehard fans out there will remember Jan Hoyer famously skipping a whole section of slab in previous competitions years gone by and going straight up the groove so it has got a bit of history that side of the wall. Close look at Billy on this move, so a nice little jump up to a quite an in-cut crimp. It's all about the plant of the left foot. And interestingly, as you fire again to the left hand, the left foot raises off the wall and you have to pin it straight back on and maintain contact with that zone volume. Crowd getting behind Atto Putsi now. See the zone just above it. After what's come before, it's really the last thing you want to see, which is another tiny hold. Yeah, three identical holds all in opposing directions. Tim just using his height advantage there to reach across to that sort of bump crimp. Billy Ryder's going to be calling it a day, unfortunately. Uh, I'll just check if Billy got awarded the zone there. I suspect he probably did from what we saw. Sure, actually, because I think the zone is the next left hold out. Uh, I don't think he's managed to find control on that, unfortunately. And the judges would appear to agree with you. I was rather hoping for Billy's sake they might have given him that. He's got a good hand on it, but yeah, control is another matter altogether. Uh, now, Alex Johnson back out. We've been enjoying seeing her back at the IFSC after a few years away. And uh, Albon Levier, who I mentioned, the only French man to make it through to the semi finals, is here. Manuel Cornu, the winner from Chongqing, has not made the journey to Munich. He won't be competing in Vail either. He feels his work is done for the bouldering season, and who can blame him after a, after a win? Uh, so it was uh, Albon Levier safely three yesterday. But as I say, no Manuel Cornu here in Munich, and uh, Sam Avazu and uh, Mikhail Marwem sadly not able to make the semis. Just whilst the climbers are on the mats, there's quite an interesting thing you mentioned about climbers deciding their season is done that's a completely new thing with the Olympics on the horizon it's changing the dynamic of the individual World Cup slightly and see how that develops over the next couple of years because some big names aren't here that's a shame uh, but you know they're focusing on the bigger picture same again with Sean Coxey not here trying to focus on the Olympics Misha does secure the zone hold out on the left feet skidding on the left foot what we expected 
Quite basic to the top now, but not easy. Yeah, the Munich crowd really coming to life now as Misha Pakora has lined it up on men's two. Are we about to see the first top of this semi-final goes feet first to enable him to get the left hand over and we are about to see the first top of the semi-final. They enjoyed that, the crowd. Really good start from Misha. Superb start. I don't think anybody would have expected him to go heel first, but a classic cross through Rose move there for the Maruts. So there's big cross under your other arm. That time in the left hand, all the way through, across the body, onto the finish hold. Classic to get the heel up first. That's what we like to see. If that move was set intentionally like that by the Roots, that would be an illegal move. The feet aren't allowed to be set to go above three meters, but nothing stopping the climbers doing it. Certainly not going to get called down for that. The crowd loves that sort of stuff. Afro Hernick here looking up at women's two. We haven't seen that much of it, but it's, to be honest, it's a pretty unpleasant boulder to climb. Not satisfying moves. You're just kind of cramped in with your feet on pretty useless holes out to the left. It doesn't look a particularly satisfying. <laughs> Looks like a battle. I think those sort of crimps really dig into the tips as well. So if you've got any skin loss after yesterday's qualifiers, a bit of heat out here, you're going to be feeling that straight away on those edges. Sort of cutters, <laughs> as they're known sometimes. A set of cutters on the wall. Well, there are some boulders where you get to do the big hero slaps up to volumes and you feel great in front of the Munich crowd. And there are some boulders, I suspect, where you get to the top and think, well, I'm glad that's over. Yeah, and I think women's, it out. <laughs> women's two probably falls into the second category. Alex Johnson now uh, known as being, even by the stands of World Cup climbers, very powerful. And uh, struggling a little with number two. I'm slightly surprised, actually. I thought uh, women's one, sorry. I, I thought we might see a little more progress being made on that. Well, I think the first climber out was here. But he had a, a pretty good fist. He actually got around to the penultimate handhold. Um, but, yeah. A long way to go. A lot of stories to develop on these boulders. So everybody back on the mats. Misha Pakoro has already a couple of minutes gone since he found his top on number two. Albon Levier trying number one. Alex Johnson, the USA, on number two. And Afra Hönig is at the far end of the stage as we look at it. There she is on the women's two. 115 left for somebody to find something. Albon going for a slightly different method. Did well to hang on to that without being quite accurate enough with the foot because it's a pretty diabolical hole. As Mike mentioned earlier, the wooden looking bit, the vinyl bit, it's very low friction. So he's actually got quite a small hole to squeeze there. He did well. He's safely through onto the zone. Now he needs to head out to that tiny crimp at the top right of your screen. Then he'll bump up from there. Yeah, he's figured out it's all about the body position through there. So much force going through the right knee at that point. Any slight knee injury on that boulder and you're going to be hoping to get it over and done with quite quickly. I was uh, just thinking that had been the first time Albon Levy has secured the zone, and it was. It was his sixth attempt, and he got the zone. So he at least won't come away from the boulder empty-handed, but with 25 seconds to go, he's got his work cut out if he wants a top. Here goes Afra, slapping up to the zone. Again, gets a good hand on it, but certainly didn't control it. And with 15 seconds to go, she calls it a day, as does Alex Johnson. Quite surprised there from Alex Johnson. I think that boulder could have been kind of a bit more up her street. But to be honest, I think she looked a little bit tall, effectively, in that starting position. The left arm was really bent on every attempt. The other female athletes really managed to keep a bit of a straight arm, which helped on those slopey volumes. We just caught the glimpse of the crowd here in Munich. It really is quite extraordinary how passionate this crowd is and how loud they are and how big it is. People still streaming through the doors behind us and they arrive in time to see Nikolai Uznik begin his semi-final and Vanda Michalkova, excellent day for the young Slovakian uh, who you may have heard and seen in the commentary box a few times down the years. Very pleased to report that today we see her on the wall. So Billy Rydl and Matteo Puzzi now give us our first chances to see the third ball. There's huge jump on men's three. Uh, Billy pretty close to it. I have to say, when you're standing underneath it, it, look, it looks like the hold you're going for is barely in the same postcode as the ones you're starting on. Yeah, really good attempt there from Billy, actually. He's, I've set with him, root set with him uh, recently uh, on, on sort of jump styles, and he's, he's very, very fast. He's got a lot of explosive power. He's, he's not tall, but he's one of the bigger competitors. Uh, and so I think that'll be up the street. Yeah, men's number three, a bit of a jump. Tim Rouser trying to follow Misha Pakularaz 
This is look, yeah, it's looking very promising for Tim. Misha managed to flash it. We haven't been watching Tim throughout, but I wouldn't be at all surprised. Look at the time. If this is his first attempt, crosses through with the left hand, seems to free up some space for the right. Nicely done. I thought he might be in a bit of trouble if he hadn't left enough room for the right, but he had left enough room. He was accurate enough to land it. Really good work from Tim, and he heads back in for an extra three minutes and 26 seconds of rest. Really interesting that the two top side bowler both have opted for the uh, foot first method. You can see him eyeing it up, and just calculating if that's a really bad idea or not, and uh, it worked really nicely. I think moves like that are a good illustration of the difference between climbers at this level and most recreational climbers. Most people would not spot that. Well, I think they wouldn't spot it, but even if they did spot it, they wouldn't <laughs> want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's four and a half meters up there. That's a, that's a long way to fall. Uh, just to let you know, Philly Rydal is going pretty well on men's three. Here he is. Uh, must have done the jump and compared to what's come before. The top is not too bad. But they are pretty tiny holes. You need to keep the body tension, keep your feet underneath you keep crimping the top hole again is pretty good as long as you can arrive on it with control and he's managed that top on number three for Billy Rydell yeah that was nice uh, this round's developing really quickly here in the men's competitions tops coming thick and fast already could go back on everything we just said at the start of the show on uh, four tops we will see uh, still men's number four is pretty pretty difficult but uh, let's have another look this is Billy on the, the one two three method looking casual as he does it a little nod to himself on his way through Roots that did say it's far it's powerful it's quick in the hands but it's not that difficult for them uh, super cool move back in the women's competition the fight is real for everybody out there at the moment Victoria Meshkova we didn't see that much of her on women's one she's on women's two and there's Vanda Michalkova of Slovakia on women's one uh, first good chance to have a look at uh, Nikolai Uznik young Austrian heads out to the zone the results really beginning to come thick and fast uh, for team Austria but then they always seem to have done they've got a, a real stream of talented climbers coming through including Nikolai now we saw Misha get so solid on there that he could actually take his hands off Nikolai didn't look anywhere near uh, balanced enough to attempt that but it just goes to show if you can get the heel in place get the hips close enough into the wall and really squeeze yourself in it shouldn't be too bad going out right the difficulty is getting in that position so a really good look at women's number three really powerful section of pinch volumes we're talking about having ink up crimps because of the temperature and this is the absolute opposite of that you can see it's in the shade though yeah, women's boulder number three is going to be a real separator I think super super hard for the women's tour so like again now number one you can see the difference in body position between him and Misha As I say, this is where Misha was able to get his hands off Nikolai if he can just rock over to the right a bit uh, it could be in quite a good position he's done that well and gets that slightly awkward hand swap done with the left hand now he's got a pretty big slap up with the right hand you want to do it as controlled as possible but there comes a moment we just have to commit it's pretty close another climb that given long enough i think could have done the boulder but five minutes must go by pretty quickly when you're up on the mats i think you can see from nikolai's right hand there let's see how that works but he's got a huge amount of tape on one of the fingertips he's obviously suffering really badly with the skin from yesterday on edges that small, you've got realistic, you've got not much chance when your fingers are covered in tape. Battling on as always though, <laughs> why not? Taisei Ishimatsu is underway. Team Japan, Oceana McKenzie, Team Australia, she's out on the mat as well. Saw her uh, in the final last time we were here in Europe, in Meiringen. Been fun to watch Oceana over the last couple of seasons. We saw her in youth competitions for a few years. And, uh, beginning to enter more and more World Cups, and I have to say, looking like the real deal. And it's great to see an Australian climbing at the business end of World Cups regularly. Alex Johnson now on number two. Yeah, just tied out to one of the footholds there. He's just getting close. The crowd really enjoying that jump. They're living, they're living it with the climbers at every time they go for a 
a stab at those three holds. So Afra Honig getting plenty of encouragement from this German crowd. This is men's, uh, women's three of the black volumes. Misha Pakora has, he looked close on men's three. 325 left for the climbers to find the top. Alex Johnson is on number two. Sadly for her falling again. Let's have a look at Misha on number three because he didn't look far off last time. That's how you do it. He was so much closer to the wall that time. The swing looked much smaller, much more controlled. He just couldn't find a way of working those crimps. Billy Rydell was very through, smooth through that section, but the route setters did say it's no gimme that last move. Yeah, there's two really interesting things about this move. One is the first move, the big sort of rocking kick jump. Uh, you place your foot to get a feel for where it needs to be, get a bit of muscle memory going, and then just rock back and fire it back up there. And at the top, you've got three small edges. Billy Rydell didn't need the third. To be honest, I think we won't see many people oh, using the third crimp. Uh, the top section. He's okay once you get up there, but Misha obviously struggled. So, yeah, okay if you're in the very top of your game. Not okay for most people. Albon Levier on number two asked for the brushes. If you're just tuning in, welcome to the Olympic Stadium in Munich. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here. Crowd is full, sun is out. We're at one of the most iconic climbing venues of the IFSC Tour, and we've got 40 of the best climbers in the world. Where else would you rather be? I think Alex Johnson would rather be one hold higher. Yeah, holds facing around the other way as well, I reckon. A bit of height advantage might help there, though. We've seen earlier competitors having to squeeze the right foot up to get into that zone trim. It's all well and good getting the zone. She'll get awarded it, which is good, but getting out of it in that position could be really difficult. I have to say, if Misha uh, can't find a way through this top section, I'd imagine he'd be very frustrated because it seems that he's done what we would could seem to be the crux, which is the jump. He's done it a couple of times now. Yeah, well, we saw Billy Roder going up with his left hand first, actually. Misha just, just figured that out as a potential method, firing up to the left Gaston of those three, the middle hold. Misha was trying to go up with his right. Billy looked really strong in that top section. Surprised we haven't seen more progress made on women's one. Yeah, I have to say, when we were there, it, it felt from the mats as if it would be the one that saw the most tops. The route setters certainly feel it would be the one that saw the most tops and yet we haven't seen many climbers getting that far in it yet. So I think it's one of those boulders, there's a classic one where there's a deceivingly large amount of relatively good holds on there, but moving between them is <laughs> really difficult. Sometimes it's that bottom section is just confusing as well. You know, this is the first time these climbers would have seen these boulders have come out and it's just Oh, I just don't know where to start. Thanks to Ishimatsu onto the crimp before he's got a slap up to that hold just next to the arete. Uh, Misha Pakoro has just to let you know did not get it done on number three. And it's super frustrating for him. He's only got 18 seconds left. Really needs to get a move on. Alice Johnson's already secured the zone here on women's two. Can't get back up there. Here is Misha. Ten seconds to go goes all the way from miles away. Great moment early on. That is what having 10 seconds left does to the body. If in doubt, smash it out. Three holds at the top skipped. Very impressive and a great moment. Huge body rotation, kick the left foot on the wall to stop it. Great moment. I have to say, it didn't actually look uh, unreasonable the way he did it. I think we might see a few, especially taller climbers who don't want to get all compressed onto those cramps. I think we might see a few people attempting that. First chance now to have a look at the fourth boulders for the men and the women. Yeah, women's number four. Really awkward little mantle stand-up start. Hard to get into the correct body position and maintain a control position on the feet. At men's four, and I have to say, when we first looked at it, we were saying to each other, oh, th they'll be adding something to that. We were sure the root setters were going to add something to the start volumes, and they said, no, no, that's it. That's, that's how you start it. Uh, really almost impossible looking running jump, certainly to the, the mere mortal, but Billy Rydell had a good go at it, and he's actually just executed it perfectly. I've just seen out the corner of my eye. We're just at the end of the wall here in Munich, so we can keep an eye on how people are doing if they're not visible on screen. 
and then Mikhail Kovac now engaged on number two, and safely up to the zone. Managing to stretch to that zone on women's number two to secure it, like we saw with Alex Johnson, but once you get stretched in that position, it's really hard to actually generate the feet up because the body is so stretched. Youth World Champion Vita Lucan was uh, on women's one there, and this is Nathan Phillips, second British climber out in the semi-final. Yeah, Riley widely regarded as one of the best slab climbers on the tour. Let's see what he makes of this bottom section. It's not really a slab in many ways, but there's slabby movements on it. We'll take body positions, bad foot, foot pad footholds. You can tell he's trying hard, Nathan, but he's done well here. There hasn't really been any loss of control. Is it? Nice and solid throughout the moves. Really tucked in on that right foot, not opting to use a heel, but going from the toe. Here's Tim. Uh, he, we've said earlier he's one of the taller climbers, but didn't either didn't spot or didn't like the jump method. Yeah, that's the third method we've seen there. That, I think that's the one the root sellers intended more so. Yeah, so creeping out to the right. And you suspect uh, when we look at this, might you think it'll probably be a, a windmill? You just roll over. Yeah, a windmill, a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> Pop the right hand out and roll over to the zone hold. It's a bit of coordination move, a bit of a double tap potentially. Two hands on the zone hold. Got to go with a bit of force, which is always tricky off such a bad foothold. Sometimes you want to put the power down to get the distance on the jump, but you risk blowing off the foothold at the same time. Fine balancing act between power and precision. So Nathan Phillips is on men's one, Vita Lucan is on women's yeah, one. Nathan actually really high up on those holds, we've seen other climbers staying lower. He's got the toe down, his body's a bit higher up on the wall. Right, Victoria Meshkova now, this is on the pretty burly looking women's three. I don't think there's a huge amount of subtlety there on women's three, but it's a very, very powerful boulder. Here's Tim. I think he is going for the jump. He's not even looking at the crimps. <laughs> the crowd here in Munich getting behind him. They've seen this done once already. They've nearly seen it done twice. Yeah, brilliant moment. Like you say, Charlie, you can see his head bobbing up and down. He was calculating, do I go to the crimps? Do I go to the jump? <laughs> and the crowd, I think, almost told him what to do there. They could see him looking up and told him to jump, and he did. Billy Rydell demonstrating that running start on number four. Absolutely no easy moves on this boulder. None of it is a gimme. It's just hard move after hard move. I think most of the moves on this boulder would be the crux on plenty of others. It really does look a tough one. Yeah, absolutely brutal the size of the crimps on the side of those black volumes on men's number four. And they've got to chop that left hand in, in between the two volumes. There's nothing there. Really relying on the toe hooks. It's really going to be interesting to see that boulder develop later on in the uh, in the afternoon here. 25 seconds to go now. Time getting tight. Uh, Misha Pekoruaz and Afra Herniger right next to us about to make their way out onto the stage as Tim has another go at the jump. Uh, Misha Pekoruaz, I have to say, he's only about five metres away from us. Looks like he's got the game face on. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker there for Tim twice off the top floor. So a new rotation begins. Jakob Schubert makes his way out onto the mats. Nanako Kura of Japan. I mentioned earlier there are some Japanese climbers missing some of their better known names. But as you said earlier, Mike, we do seem to be able to just replace them almost like for like. So Alex Johnson mentioned it early, powerful climate. She's now on women's three. Interesting to see how she gets on with this one. Albon Levier of France lining up the jump. Choosing a slightly different method but executing all the same. It seems that once you've got that zone hold and the one to the left, you really are in a good place. Just couldn't quite find a way up to the crimps. Jakob Schubert now, first 
First couple of attempts on uh, men's one. Oh, it's Johnson, meanwhile, on men's three. Uh, women's three, excuse me. Just keep an eye on Alex for one second. She's pretty close to that zone now. Got the heel hook in place. It certainly looked like the method. Uh, meanwhile, we're joined in the commentary box by a very special guest, chief route setter here in Munich, Chris Danielson. Chris, first impressions of the semi final so far? Well, it's a little hot in Munich here today. Um, I think the, it's going well. We see a couple tops on the men's side, and a little bit hard for the women, but you never know. There's a lot of climbing still to come. And uh, overall, what's been what, what's pleased you most from what you've seen so far? Seems like the men are figuring out the jump on number three quite quickly, uh, but number one causing a few problems. Yeah, that's as we expected, and I think also the number two in the men's. If we look at the men's round in general, we also already had some tries on the four, so it's diverse and everything seems possible. And also in the women's, I think we're seeing people close on the first boulder, getting to the jump, and the second climbing up high in the crimps. No tops yet, but uh, we'll see what happens. And how do these conditions compare to what you've been setting in most of the week? Well, it was colder most of the week, but we also knew it would be hotter today, so we did our best to try to adjust for it. You know, we, we can only ever do our best. Um, and it feels a little hotter today, but it, there's also a, you know, a big difference in the very best on the women's side and, uh, and some of the other climbers, so it's a hard balance. We saw that in the qualification yesterday, too. It was hard. Okay, Chris, appreciate your time, and hopefully you've learned your lesson never to come near us when you're watching the semi-final. You've got to stay well out of view. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Chris. Back in action, Misha Bakuraz doing really well on men's number four. This is the most progress we've seen on this boulder after Billy Rydell gets that left hand onto the left side of that middle volume. A big rollover now to the fiberglass. It's like a slanting jug up there. It's a jug, but it's in the wrong direction. Yeah, and, and uh, as we spotted when we were down on the mats, you, you want to go with the right hand, but you really have very little choice but to go with the left. So you, you're going with the wrong hand. It's an awkward uh, position from which to launch and an awkward position in which to arrive. Here's Jakob Schubert. Bouldering season hasn't always gone his way, but last time out in Wujang, he was on the podium. Been going really well. Doesn't need much of an introduction. Absolutely in the Hall of Fame Hello, legend yeah. category. And always enjoys climbing here in Munich. We're not going to Innsbruck this year for a World Cup or World Championship, so this is about as close as he's going to get to a home World Cup, only a couple of hours down the road. It's very much a home World Cup for that lady there, Afra Hernig. She's on number four. She'll creep the right foot out onto a tiny little hold, and then you've got to roll over onto two volumes. Uh, Mike, some interesting insights, though, from Chris Danielson. Yeah, I mean <laughs> It's always tough asking them these questions when they're in the heat of the moment. You know, he was just standing there trying to reflect on what he needs to do, you know, adjustments for finals or whatever. But a really good, honest assessment. I think he, yeah, I think he, he, he said it as it is. It's, it's kind of going by the form book at the moment. I think maybe a couple of surprises here and there, but nothing, nothing too dramatic. Maybe they'll be a little bit disappointed that the guys are skipping a couple of the crimps at the top of the wall and managing to jump to the top. But that's the game. You know, it's a really, really hard job. This is more like it for Misha Pakoru, as, as I said, he snuck into the semi-final after a long and nervous wait, and he really looks in the mood here. Sadly, he's not quite going to find a way on number four. Yeah, he's actually starting to look pretty tired there, actually. I think that big jump that he did on men's number three took some wind out of his sails, that's for sure. Salvon Levier just at the top there. Having a look at the crimp method. What a shape. Oh, go again. It was, yeah, it was another amazing method on there. The men's jump real fireworks here. An interesting, one of the best climbers on the scene. Like I said, Jakob Schubert walking away from men's number one already. Men's number one really upsetting the apple cart at the moment. No tops. Yeah, also interesting uh, from Chris as well. He basically said, hey, it's early days. And uh, it's always hard to judge whether the difficulty level is absolutely spot on this early in the semi-final. And as Chris said, there's an awful lot of climbers still to come. Certainly putting on a good show so far. Yeah, I think him and his team have done have done really well through the qualifiers as well. I think, Great yeah, boulders, yeah, very I think good most, aesthetics. Most people seem to feel it was one of the best, if not the best qualifying round of uh, the season so far. Peter Lucan on women's two. Might be able to hear the crowd cheering. 
think we've had a top on number three for the men. We'll come back to that. Here's Nathan Phillips on men's two. Absolutely savage series of moves. I have to say the first move looked harder. The uh, first move looked harder than it's proving to be. This is a replay on men's three. Nikolai Uznik. That's how you do it. Nice to see another method again there. Men's number three, loads of different options. Chong is looking really close to the top of men's number one. Yeah, we've just cut back to Jong Won Chon, and he's in what has been so far uncharted territory in this men's semi-final. He wasn't feeling great yesterday, Jong Won Chon. He certainly seems to be a bit better today. First top of number one falls, and it's Jong Won Chon who gets it. The way that he slapped that right hand. Oh, just as we see Tim actually coming quick and fast here. Tim finds the top of men's number four as well. All boulders now been topped in the men's competition. Correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie. No boulders topped in the women's competition so far. Just double check the scores. That's actually coming all over the place here. Yeah, this is what I was saying on men's number three. I think that's the fourth method that we've seen up there. It's quite cool, actually. Sometimes Rutos like just to force all the climbers down one path. Sometimes it's nice that there's multiple options out there and there's a bit of calculation to be done as well. So John Wan Chon, first top of men's one, and it was a flash. Excellent start from him. As I say, he didn't feel great yesterday, apparently, but seems, if not fully recovered, recovered enough to do a boulder that's just stopped Jakob Schubert. So uh, if, if that's still feeling under the weather then give me that any day Peter Luke in the youth world champion struggling on women's too we haven't had a top yet in the women's competition here goes Nathan Phillips really powerful first move and then you got a big slap out left we just caught a glimpse there of uh, Johanna Fairbert finalist in Taiwan last year Safely into the semi finals of Munich. There's Nanda Michal Kovac on women's three. I think that's going to be the theme on women's three for quite some time, unfortunately. And a good, honest assessment of the women's competition there by Chris Danielson, saying that the, the field is very broad, uh, a lot of strong climbers to come in the women's competition. And, uh, yeah, I think the boulders there are really set to challenge the top, top three or four climbers on women's number three. This is a replay of Jong Won Chon earlier on. So we saw a few climbers get up there on the crimp. How uh, happy is on those crimps? This is uh, one of the moves that stopped a lot of the climbers. No problem for John Wan Chon. This move, no gimme either, and neither is the top move. That one he's got his left hand on. It's, it's okay, but it's very rounded and it's slightly more overhanging than it might look from that angle. And it's done well. There's just that uh, intermediate crimp there that he's got his left hand on, and then you've got to cross through with the right hand, and one sat landed didn't look like letting go. Yeah. I think John knows that that's a big moment already in this competition. If he's, you know, He wants to get back out there fighting in the finals and if there's anybody going to be happy on the crimps it was going to be John Wong Chon. Famously known for his crimp power and yeah, men's number one really, really suited his style. Nothing for you. Hannah Faber on women's one. Yone Kruder will be next out. Jesse Peltz next out on the women's side. The lead world champion from 2018 and the overall Boulder World Cup winner from 2018. Jesse Peltz and Yone Kruder, of course, it was here in Munich about nine months ago. We were here in August in 2018. That's our traditional slot was where Yone Kruder claimed the overall title. Oceana McKenzie now moves on to the left-hand side of the Munich stage as we look at it. She's on to number three, Tose Ishimatsu's on men's three. Five minutes begins again for them. You can just see Albon Levier just stepping out of the shot. He's on the left on men's four. Alex Johnson is back out on the wall. She's on women's four. Here goes Yerne. can see he's on the toe we've talked about it it's a minutiae but 
it's a very important piece of mind, Yushai, because when he was on the toe, he just never looked solid enough to really swap the hands over. Had a go at it, couldn't find the way. Jakob Schubert now on number two. Yeah, he's found a static technique almost through that first section. Ends up in a similar position once the foot releases, but goes through that bottom section with a little less power. Interesting little right flick there on the right hand to an undercut as well. You would have thought at this stage Jakob Schubert should bring this boulder home. Yeah, not known to be lacking in strength or desire, Jakob Schubert, and he'll need both if he's going to top it from here. Now then, will he go for the feet? I don't think he's going to need them. He's got the left hand in place, he's got the right hand in place. Uh, it looked like things were getting slightly urgent in the last five, ten seconds of that climb from Jakob Schubert, but he got the job done. Tyson Ishimatsu, no problem for him on the jump on number three. He's got the heel hook in place and now heading up to the crimps, perhaps went a little too fast. It's interesting to see Jakob, that's a technique that we imagined on the top of uh, men's number three there uh, with a double toe drag, so men's number two, excuse me, uh, the toe hooked underneath, not opting for the high heel hook. Interesting to see Tim Rouser at the top of the leaderboard from the Netherlands, keeping that winning streak from the Eurovision Song Contest win last night, I see, from the Netherlands. That must have fired him up. How do you know that? <laughs> it was a long night in the hotel. <laughs> I bet it was a long night in Munich last night. Bayern won the title yesterday afternoon. I wouldn't uh, advise anybody trying to perform athletically to have gone out in Munich last night, that's for sure. Nanoko Kuro of uh, Japan. On number two, 19 year old. In that slightly awkward starting position on women's two. There's two kind of Tetris volumes facing yeah. each other. Definitely one of those moves where it's one thing to get there and it's another thing to leave. So here's Yerne up to the tiny crimp. We can't quite see his heel. I'm assuming he was on the heel. Still no tops on the women's side. But we've seen it so many times in the women's semi-final. In the past couple of years, we do seem to get more and more tops as the round goes by. But no doubt the women have got a very tough challenge here today. Alban Levier showing us how the start is done on number four. But not able to move on from it. Yeah, I think Alex Johnson just showing us how bad that rollover volume is actually. Just hitting it quite well with one hand, but really not even close to sticking it, unfortunately. Nanoko. Again, number two, 55 seconds left for Nanako to find something. And you can see she's, she's been getting a number of reasonably comfortable positions on those start holes, but it's then freeing up a hand to commit. She's done pretty well now. If she can bridge her right foot out and kind of get stood on top of the right hand volume, then you are in a reasonable position. It's really interesting to watch now. She really seems to be struggling with the hip turnout, trying to get the right foot to face around the right direction. She opted to go up with the left hand rather than the right. She really seems to struggle to just twist the hip turn. I wonder if there's something going on there, a bit of a tweak or some something that's stopping her hips opening out properly. So Yerne, nothing for him, making Zhang Wan Chon's flash a number one look more and more impressive. Nothing for Jesse Pilts on uh, women's one. Yifei Pan, the next climber out on the men's side and on the women's, it's Camilla Moroni. Nathan Phillips comes back out. He's already onto number three. Vita Lucan will be next to him and then we'll have Van der Michalkova and Nikolai Uznik finishing their rotations on number four. Talking to the Chinese coaches, they're aware there's been a bit of hype about Yufei Pan, but they really feel he is the real deal. And it certainly seems that the results are just coming nice and steadily. It's not been a, a Yan Yagambret by any means where you just explode onto the scene, but it's just year by year building slowly, and they've got very, very high hopes for him. Zhang Wan Chon now, what a position he could put himself in. Shoulder move doesn't look any easier the more you see it. So safe look to the zone. He's got both the zones so far, Zhang Wan Chon. And 
and one top thing from here. Back him to turn it into two tops. Really looks in the mood here, John Won Chon. Second to last hole beckons. Will he go with the feet? I don't think he'll need them. He's that strong. I'd imagine he'll just uh, be able to go with the hands. No, he just chooses to use the feet. As a matter of the method, he finds a way. John Won Chon, two tops on the first two boulders. Well, Mike, we were speculating at the top of the screen, and it probably uh, at the top of the stream probably serves us right for speculating that we might not see four tops on the men's side. I'm beginning to think it might be true of the women's side, but not the men's. John Won Chon looks in the mood here. Yeah, I think a lot of people look in the mood here. Really, there's a you know there is a special atmosphere here in Munich. People really do seem to kind of bring another level to their game, drop a gear as soon as they come out here in the semi-finals of Munich. Uh, the boulders look absolutely awesome at the moment, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very tough round for these women out here at the moment. But I think the round will develop in that category in the men's. I think it's going to come down to three or four the tops to get yourself through to a finals position, and uh, as always, number of attempts crucial. John Won Chon certainly not burning through many attempts, that's for sure. He's uh, yeah, didn't quite look his best yesterday, but he looked firmly at his best today. I think if you look at this round of men's boulders, there's each boulder generally has a couple of elements to it, which is some sort of timing element combined with some really small crimps. Uh, so you would have thought John, some of the Andre coming out later on. I think this round's going to suit those. Some of the really big, heavy guys, I think it could be it could be hard work for them. Just so you know, that was a second flash from John Won Chon. So two boulders, two flashes, a perfect first half of the semi-final. Yufei Pan again, he's on the toe. Got enough flexibility to just about pull it off, actually. And it might make standing up slightly easier. The fact that he is on the toe, you mentioned it earlier, Mike, it's much easier to push off that than it is if you've really got the weight through the heel. And almost able to go statically. He's actually quite happy on the small hold. He's really locked down that awful left hold crimp that he's got there. Does well to hang on to the sloping volume with the left hand, but he just couldn't quite get the feet engaged. When they cut loose, you feared for him. And there's a big cheer, and you can see in the background, that's why Nathan Phillips is on number three. And finding a top, you can see him right at the top of your screen there. Top for Nathan Phillips on boulder three. Let's have another look. We're about to see a replay of Nathan Phillips. We did see him actually topping in the distance from this shot. Uh, no, this is Johanna This is uh, Johanna Ferber. We'll have a look at that replay at the end of this rotation. Johanna Ferber here on uh, women's two. Really does look a brutal uh, boulder, but in a quite subtle way. It's not huge slaps and big jumps just awkward positioning and slippery feet. Here goes Yufei Pan, certainly looks capable of doing this boulder, but he's got to read it right and he's also got to execute it. It's interesting, this top section of all, we saw it last time. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's two distinct angles, it's overhanging and it's twisted sideways. And so when he hits this next big fiberglass volume and he wants to kick his left foot down, he's got to go in and round. Everything wants to make his body rotate round to the right. And he's got to dial it down to the left that time he does. Gets it round the corner. Very shallow angle change as he comes in for the match. Couldn't match Jong Wong Chong's performance on that top section. Heartbreaker walks away from that one. Yeah, certainly the, the second best uh, attempt we've seen. Let's have another look at Nathan Phillips on this top section then. A little toe hook around the corner, that was nice, no black tape around there. Big double cut, loo cut loose on the Gaston's. Shoulders and elbows winging out, and another method, a big cross through to finish. Big moment for Nathan Phillips. Good top. Apparently, he'll be working his way up to sixth position with that. Katja Kadic underway now. Alexei Rubsov, the 2015 Munich winner, is out onto the stage. There's Oceana McKenzie, closest to us. Still no tops on the women's side. Here goes Alexei. Just to see how he gets on with this ball. This is Jakob Schubert on number three. Brilliant. 
was almost an instant replay of Nathan Phillips there. Interesting, we saw the replay of Nathan just a few seconds before. Action coming all over the place here as Yerne Crudo looks like he's going to find the top of men's number two. Gets it done. Disappointment for him on men's number one, but his round is up and running. Well, Mike, this is a uh, classic, and I have to say one of many examples of what do we know, because <laughs> we thought we'd see a lot, uh, a reasonable amount of tops on the women's side, not so many on the men's. It's proven to be the exact opposite. But I think still too early to, to judge whether the difficulty level's right. I have to say I'd be surprised if we saw four tops on the women's side. But there's an awful long way to go still in this semi-final. And there's some young Slovenian who I've heard is pretty handy called yeah. Jan Janja Jarnbreth or something yeah. still to come. Su su surprised to see more than one climber do all four. But there might be one who does all four. We'll see. Alexi's now got three minutes left. Still only Jong Won Chon who's found a way on this one. Yufei Pan was not far off at all. Temperature really beginning to rise here in Munich. I mentioned it earlier, the roof here can be a bit of a double-edged sword. If it's cold, it, it keeps it slightly warmer in here. And if it's raining, obviously it keeps you dry, but when it gets hot right in the middle of the day, it does have almost a greenhouse effect. Not sure it really increases the temperature, but it certainly increases the humidity. And it certainly feels pretty warm. Fortunately, the wall is in the shade, but uh, yeah, I shouldn't imagine conditions are ideal and they're probably not getting any better as time goes by. This women's rounds really developing to be quite interesting. One of the best climbers in the world, Jessica Hill's out there at the moment. No zones to her names on the, on the second boulder already and really struggling on that one. Brutally hard women's round here at the moment. Katja Kadic, the latest to try her luck on, on the women's one. This is Oceana McKenzie, closest to the camera, number four. The foothold she's going for, you can just make out directly below the lower of those two volumes. It's not actually directly below, it just looks like it from here. Oceana McKenzie has just got a really, really small crimp with her left hand, another tiny screw on jib. Seeing a lot of that on this round. Apart from the two ends of the wall here in Munich, it's actually a very overhanging competition ball, so it's quite interesting to see so many small holds. That lady again, Jessie Pills, who I was just talking about. No climbers really getting through into the zone hold and getting it in a happy way. Uh, Mike, we've got a, a very special guest here. Alex Johnson, fresh down from the wall. Alex, that is a tough set of boulders. Yeah, uh, possibly the hardest semi-final round I've ever competed again. Any of them where you felt you were close, or if you had another five minutes, you might have cracked? Um, maybe the first boulder. I think if I'd have had like another maybe minute on the first boulder, I think I could have stuck that jump and then possibly gone to the top. Um, mantles aren't really my strong suit, but I finally like unlocked the bottom sequence with not enough time left to sort of like figure out the top. But I don't think I could have gotten any farther on any of the rest of them. <laughs> and uh, this number four, we just wa we watched Oceana McKenzie on it. Any idea what the method might be? Is it to just roll over with both hands simultaneously? I think the method, I was just talking to my coach about it and he said that I was sort of jumping sideways more than I was jumping up. And I think that sloper, the like pregnant belly on top that you're jumping to, it has no texture. It's really bad and really slippery. And so jumping sideways on it, like a, an intense drive-by like that, you wouldn't stick to it. So I think sort of popping a little more and jumping up and coming down on it would maybe be the method, but I mean, Yanya will show us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, go enjoy a very well-earned rest. Cool, thank and you. And we'll look forward, hopefully we'll be seeing in uh, the semi-finals and the final yeah, veil. Crazy, two zones to final, let's know. No, sorry, in Vail. Oh, hey, yeah, you right. never know, two zones Dude, might yeah, be <laughs> Hey, if they're that hard, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Cool, thank you. Thanks a lot. It's great to get uh, live feedback as climbers walk past. The climbers will be absolutely cursing the organizers for putting us right next to where they walk out, because <laughs> you can basically rugby tackle them as they walk past. But uh, yeah, interesting from Alex Johnson that she said she might have got number one done, but probably couldn't have got any further on any of the others, regardless of time. Uh, one man who's thoroughly enjoying himself here today is Jong Won Chon. Uh, 
he looks like he could get his smoking jacket on and he's just sit by the fire once he gets on those crimps, John Won Chon. No problem at all for him. Uh, we'll look at the time. I suspect that was a flash for him. He flashed the first two. If it wasn't a flash, it would only be second attempt, maybe third if he needed a few goes on the jump. Yeah, Chon's absolutely on fire here. Unfortunately, that's going to be knocking Tim Rouser off of the top of the podium very shortly when that score updates. Yeah, like you say, Charlie, very, very interesting to speak to Alex Johnson. Say one of the hardest round semi-final rounds he's ever competed in. And also interesting that they have full respect for Yanya Garnbrett coming out last. Let's see what Yanya shows us how it's done. I've got to say, that was a classic comment from Alex <laughs> Johnson. To and uh, I, I said to her, she didn't quite hear me. She, she doesn't have a headset. So wasn't able to hear that well and I said hopefully we see you in the semi-final in Vail and she said yeah maybe two zones is enough and actually hey well what, Moscow semi-final round in the women's absolutely brutal you know it's, it's happened before I Peter mean Luke and just firing off that top hold there as well on women's number four the local crowd are going to be pretty happy about this man getting close on men's number one yeah you can hear the, chow, uh, the cheer for Alex Megos Creeping the right foot up, choosing to go for a heel hook. And I think the problem will be when he releases it, if he can be accurate, he can go across to that crimp. Yeah, the, the problem is he needs to go out left, and by having the heel hook, you're kind of pinned over to the right. But yeah, uh, Alex Johnson, I think uh, she's currently in first place with two zones. She's the only, only person who's managed it, so uh, we'll see. Johanna Ferber there on number three. It's a very, very physical bowler. This is Vita Lucan, right at the left-hand end of the wall. You've got to roll across on number four. That was interesting as well, what Alex said about that, where she was maybe jumping, she said she was jumping too high. Or was I think she was jumping too sideways and too not, sideways. not going high enough to land on it. And uh, I'd say a new terminology for me. I love when you interview the USA athletes, uh, pregnant belly volume. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. start using that one. Yeah, yeah well-reminded. I well filed that one away when she said it but I must remember that one put that one in the repertoire <laughs> not often you get out climbing jargon so <laughs> thoroughly enjoy hearing that you didn't know that one here's Yufei Pan he was looking very very good on number one uh, not quite as much progress on number two here's Mia Crample getting close on women's one still no tops in the women's competition interesting Mike we were watching the root setters testing that earlier and one of them did it in his trainers uh, and that's not in any way to put down the climbers, but it just goes to show that if you practice it and you know how to do it, it's more than possible. Yeah, it's one of those classic things, you know. I mean, bowlers like that are okay in the trainers because of the size of the holds. Um, but when, yeah, it's you just need climbing. Once you know the moves, it's easy. But this is the first time these climbers get to see these bowlers first time out on the mats. Uh, you know, they have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. So here goes Alex Megos again. I don't think he'll try the toe, uh, the heel hook again. Yufei Pan, he was close on number one, he's close on number two. Can he convert close into a top? He goes with the right hand. Ah, oh, you could tell he instantly didn't like it. He tried to bring the right hand back to salvage the situation, but it yeah. was too late then. With over just under 35 seconds to go, he's gonna be ruining that mistake, I think. It's a, could have been a big moment there for Yufei Pan. Camilla Moroni, we just caught a glimpse of on number two. Vita Lucan's pulled back on for another go on number four. She's actually really close to sticking that pregnant belly volume. And there it is from Vita Lucan. Are we about to see the first top, not just of women's four, but of the women's semi final? Vita Lucan getting in position, but just running out of time. But she has at least secured the zone. Progress being made, and there is a crowd here in Munich. Absolutely extraordinary support here. I think there's space for one or two more people, but not many more. It is absolutely packed in here. What a fantastic venue for a World Cup. And then behind the wall, we've got the glorious Olympic Stadium. I think it seats 60,000. Panning out behind us, it really is a fabulous place to have a World Cup. Well, the climbing keeps going like this. We'll be down on the pitch next time with 60,000 spectators rather than in the wings of the arena. Sounds good to me. Yuji Inoue now of Japan. Another climber we don't see 
as often as some of their better known names who stayed at home and he's getting his shot in the semi-final. Lione Krud is out on the mats, Jakub Schubert is out on the mats, Alexi Rubsov is out on the mats. So here's Kruder, got it done on number two, couldn't find a way on number one. I think he was going for the jump. Yeah, he could see him lucky across at the crimps and then across at the top hold and went for the jump. Certainly looks possible for him. Alexei Rubsov now chose to use the heel. Finds the top, number two falls for Alexei and this is looking pretty hopeful for Jakub Schubert. He's done the hard bit, which is getting the left hand there. And he does the easy bit by bringing the right hand up to join it. Importantly, that's three tops for Jakub Schubert. If anybody knows what he's doing and how important that was at the top, Jakob Schubert's the man. Be interesting to see if we can grab a word with him as he comes through. Yeah, he flashed the last two as well, I should point out. That's Kaczy Kadic uh, safely up to the zone on women's two. The climbers beginning to make a bit of a dent in these. Schubert originally in first place ahead of Chon with that. Yeah, three tops and four zones for Jakob. Uh, three tops for Jong Won Chon, who hasn't yet attempted the fourth ball, and he's flashed all of them so far. Yuji Inoue battling away on number one. Genia Kazbekova is uh, on number one for the women. Here's Jesse Pilt's women's three. That women's three is looks absolutely hard as nails. We haven't seen really any meaningful progress being made on it. Here goes Kruder lining it up on number three. Seemed torn between two methods last time. This time he chooses to go for the crimps. Yeah, I think Kruder is absolutely blasting through that bottom section, but he just looks like he's got so much leg up there. He just doesn't know where to kind of where to try and find a heel hook be interesting as the time runs down whether he'll be looking into the desperation box to see if it's worth just jumping to that finish hold like we've seen from Tim Rouser and a couple of the others. Yeah, Misha Pekora was, was uh, the, the pioneer of that. Of course, the other, the other climbers can't see him, but time running out and he thought, yeah. why not? And, uh, and it worked out and we've seen it done since. Yuji Inoue asking the brushes to do their thing on number one can he find a way here comes catcher one of six slovenian women through to today's semi-final she's already been up to the zone jesse pilts is uh, still looking at number three but nobody yet has even got the zone on that one on the women's side Kacic having to be very precise with the feet to try and avoid the poor section, the low friction section of those starting black volumes. And this looks good from Kacic. That's a poor hold. The one above it, the actual top hold, is said to be pretty good. Was that Kacic with 55 seconds to go, opt against further attempts? No, oh, she is, yes, yeah, she's going in very early. Perhaps gave that one absolutely everything she had, realised she couldn't do better than the zone and will take the extra rest. Interesting with 38 seconds left, Kruder is on the mat, still really needs a top here. He's only got one top to his name, currently on bowl number three. Like you say, Kachi walking off the mat there, it was interesting, it looks like he had good progress there, but maybe those in-cut crimps just are a bit too heinous to continue. He has lost a lot of skin in previous competition semi-final rounds. Maybe on a bit of self-preservation there. Uh, Kruder now getting close on men's threes. Done the jump again, no problem. And uh, I'm just watching him. He's trying to figure out which method to go for. We're currently with and, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Evgenia Kazbekova. And Kruder did not get it done on number three. Yeah, I think with Katja, she knows she's one of the strongest climbers. She gave the bowler everything she's got. And I suspect probably made a relatively clever calculation that not many people are going to top it and she can survive without a top as well, especially seeing as she secured the zone. Currently equal third in the women's. Four women with just one zone to their name. Tomoaki Takata now. It's on men's one. Emily Phillips gets underway. Alex Megos is back out. You can see him on the left-hand side of your shot there on men's two. Very impressed with Emily Phillips yesterday, watching her in the qualifying round. 
really, really sort of quick climber, very positive, good movement. It's great to see her, just 16 years old, coming through from the youth scene. Not that many climbers come through the youth and really turn it into a great result in the senior competition. Have a look at Magos whilst we're there, just comes short. Just hit the crimp on the left-hand side of that middle triangle, just a little bit low. Mia's looking much better on this one. She's an absolute animal on the crimps. We've seen that many rounds this year already. If anybody were to enjoy that boulder, it could be her. Let's see if we can find a first top here in the women's competition. Yeah, still we wait. I thought we might see one, actually. Vita Lucan was going really well on number four. Still nobody even had a zone on number three, and it's a top on men's three for Yufei Pan. Well... He really uh, will feel he deserved that after being so close on the first two. Interesting as well, Mike, you do seem to see it often the difference between the absolute top of the top, the creme de la creme who make it into finals regularly and people that nearly make it are those nearly moves and Yufei Pan was close on both the first two bowlers, couldn't turn it into tops. Jong Won Chom was close on both the first two bowlers and flashed them both. It can often be that last move, that tiny little extra 2% makes all the difference. Here goes Alex Megos, 250 left for him, heading up on men's two. And looking pretty solid, the left hand side, he's trying to leave enough space for the right, smooth as you like from Alex Megos, and he gets a good cheer and acknowledges the crowd with a fist pump. And uh, with the jump to come, an extra two and a half minutes rest might be very nice because it's quite a a big jump it's not especially hard one but you need a lot of energy and Alex will just have a couple of extra minutes to get a little more freshness in the limbs this is Johanna Ferber squeezing her way up onto the start of women's four you see Sean in the background there as well he's currently sitting in second place with three tops early prediction would be that if you're in the free top club in the men's, that will be enough to get you a spot in the finals. Oh, Jong Won Chon hadn't fallen off a boulder in the semi final until he got to number four. He's already secured a zone, so three tops, four zones is already his score. 140 left to go. It would be a brave calculation, but he may calculate that he's done enough. I, he would be uh, well advised to get it done, but if he's feeling not quite sure about the condition of his uh, skin or, or just how he's feeling. Perhaps, perhaps he'll do what Katja Karic did and, and leave the match relatively early. It's Camilla Maroney on number three. Still no zone for anyone on that one. I think it'd be too early for the stage for John to, to make that calculation. I think he has to go all in. Yeah, he's showing no signs of heading off. I think what he may well do is wait until there's about 30 seconds to go and then just give it a full gas attempt. I think Chon's one of those guys, until there's blood coming out of fingertips, he's not leaving the mat. He's a bit like the knight on Monty Python with his arms chopped off, yeah. Just keeps on going. Uh, Johanna Ferber not too far off there on women's four. To let you know, Nanako Kura did get the uh, zone on that women's four. Camilla Moroni got a battle on her hands with women's three, but then again, so has everybody. Tomoaki Takata flying through the air on number one, but not finding a way. Johanna Ferber, who uh, according to scores doesn't yet appear to have been awarded the zone, has another go at it. She got two, two good hands on it. Chon does walk off the stage, just finishing that discussion, three tops, four zones, surely that would be enough. He's yeah, pretty happy with himself. Yeah, you suspect so, especially seeing as he flashed uh, three of the, uh, those three tops were all three flashes. Here comes Adam Andre. Gets his semi final underway. Miss Chongqing uh, due to illness. Was back in Wujiang. 
and he's very much back here in Munich. Went really well in the qualifying round yesterday. He'll be climbing next to uh, Julia Shanordi on his rotation as we watch Evgenia Kazbekova on number two. Uh, Alexei Rubsov's going well on number three, by the way. He's found a top on number three. Evgenia Kazbekova is going really well on number two. Are we about to see the first top of this women's semi final? Needs to get her feet sorted out. The hole she's going for at the top is reasonably good. Lands with the right hand, lands with the left. Evgenia Kazbekova finds the first top of the women's semi final. That will instantly fire her to the top of the leaderboard. Awesome moment there from Yenya. She looked like she was on a different boulder to everybody else. Let's have a quick look at back at this is Alexei's top. Yeah, yeah, she looks so happy on those crimps as the body looks so stable. It's a static position between all the footholds. Really, really big moment there in the women's competition. Here's uh, Katja Kadic. Now, if she can secure a zone, it'd be, she'll be the first person to have got a zone on that women's three. She got a hand on it, but certainly didn't control it. Here's Adam Ondra. Needs to get that foot slightly more directly underneath him, you would imagine. We've seen people certainly have a lot more success with a heel underneath him rather than a toe, but he looks to be making it work. Adam Andre progressing really nicely here on men's number one. Let's see what he can do on this top section. This is where another strong climber, Alexander Magos, just struggled at the top of the wall. This is looking good here for Andre. Early top could put himself in a really good position going through to the next boulders. Looking casual on the crimps. Big moment here in Munich 2019. Adam Andre is on fire once again. <laughs> I think he's pretty happy with that one, Adam Andre. <laughs> Absolutely crazy on the mats. And uh, we're joined by another very special guest, Jakob Schubert, fresh down from the wall. We've just seen Adam top number one. That was the only one you couldn't do. That was a pretty good round for you on the whole. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, climbing. Uh, first one was definitely difficult for me. Um, it's all about uh, hip flexibility, but still I felt uh, kind of close on it. And then, uh, yeah, I could con continue with a really great run. Um, definitely an easier semi-final compared to the last ones we have seen this year but um yeah, i hope it's enough for finals and uh, anyways i had so much fun like the crowd is already amazing and uh it was really great to climb and uh, in wujiang you had a fantastic result what have you been doing since then just concentrating on bouldering training still uh no after wujiang i started doing a bit of uh, lead training um it's not that much time until we have the first lead world cup so i started doing some uh some laps and some endurance stuff but uh the last sessions before coming here, I, I did a few bouldering sessions again, and um, uh, yeah, I really wanted to do well here in Munich. So um, I'm happy it, it uh, went quite well in semifinals. Um, yeah, I don't know my my result yet, but uh, I hope it's enough for finals. We'll see. Yeah, you're currently sitting in second place, three tops, four zones. This must be a, must feel almost like a home World Cup for you. You get amazing support here. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, it's a lot of people that I know, or good friends, family, my father and my sister. They're all here and supporting me so um, it's just a two hour drive from my hometown um, and I mean anyways I think the crowd here is just amazing they support everyone and uh, it's so loud it's definitely one of the best uh, World Cups. Okay well I know a lot of people enjoyed seeing you back in the finals in Wujiang and hopefully we'll see you this evening. Thank you yeah I hope so too. Thanks man. Cheers. Great stuff from Jakob Schubert. Apologies uh, if we were talking over a couple of key bits of action there. We saw Jesse Pilts getting the zone on number four and uh, Kachi Kadic finally make a breakthrough and getting the zone on number three. Yeah, just as you were interviewing Jakob there, I was just focusing on the action. I think the door is really starting to open here on women's number four. Jesse Pilts having a really good go past that zone volume right up to the next slotted crimp up to the right. Let's see what she makes of this. We read that there might be a little right toe hook or heel hook underneath that lower volume is uh, crazy cruder he's fighting for his life here currently in sixth position with just one top he really needs something here it's not going to be enough for cruder really today yeah. it's not going to be his day now currently sitting in sixth place so jan hoyer makes his way out onto the stage you will remember no doubt munich 2017 when he won in front of his home crowd what a fantastic moment that was perhaps best remembered much as I would love to say for my fabulous commentary for the uh, rather industrial language employed by Alex <laughs> Megos at the winning moment, but it, <laughs> it was raw emotion in the commentary box and raw emotion on the wall as well. What a moment that was when we look back on the last few seasons of the IFSC.
Jan Hoyer winning in front of a very loud and vocal Munich crowd, one of the real standouts. And here he is again and really looked like he fancied it yesterday in the qualifiers. Let's see what the semi-final brings for him. Tomowaki just finding a different method there at the moment on uh, men's number two, not quite finding the power to generate off the low feet. Emily Phillips looking quite comfortable in this position yeah, at the moment. So Yenya Kazbakova opting to get the left foot up first before moving up the right. A really technical women's number two, really nice boulder. Now, I think it could be quite tricky for Jan this move because there's, there's so much limb. Because he is so tall, there's so much for him to fit into this gap between the zone and the foothold. Uh, but he's done pretty well. He's actually using his height to his advantage there by almost skipping out a move by reaching straight across to that crimp it's good climbing from Jan went up with the right hand even had time to slap the wall on the way down knew he was on his way but it certainly looks possible for him you can really tell Jan he is in the mood for fighting here he, he, he's got that kind of look about him that he, he's it there's a hold to skip he's gonna skip it there's a hold to crush he's gonna crush it yeah, looking forward to watching Jan in front of his home, home crowd also in front of his home crowd, Alex Megos, two bowlers down the line on number three. This is uh, Mia Krampel on women's three. We saw her compatriot Katja Kalic get a zone. We have, do have finally a top in the women's semi-final with Evgenia Kazbakova getting the job done on number two. Here goes Alex Megos. Nice little float of the one, two, three there from Megos. Yeah, he actually arrived at the bottom one relatively slowly, but I think he had enough power just to kind of give himself that final boost onto the zone and the one to the left. And I think he'll go via the crimps. Drops back down, has a bit of a rethink. Will he go all the way to the top? It's really interesting, that cluster of three holes. It asks so many questions. When you're up there, you feel like you've done the jump, I'm in here. And then you've got the hardest bit still to come, and it's it's trying to figure out what to do rather than how to do it. And you can see them second guessing on every time they go up to the hold. Feels right, doesn't feel right, right at the very end. Interestingly, just during that uh, interview, Jakob as well, Kadikadzic on women's number three, she had a couple of really really good goes, and was absolutely spent on the mat afterwards, just KO'd at the bottom of the boulder. Well, fortunately, she's got a, a relatively unphysical final boulder. You've got that rollover, and then you have got a bit of a compression move a bit higher up, but she, I don't think energy will be too much of a problem. Uh, Alex not getting the jump done this time. Well, he's really proving that that dyno is more about arm power than leg power there as well. It's not really parkour climbing. It's just pure arm power and coordination. He's actually leaving the left foot behind and smearing it on the wall to generate the uh, upwards momentum off his arms more so than his bottom left foot. Yufe Pan, the latest climber to try number four. Seen a few tops already. Been done a couple of times. Jakob Schubert did it. Tim Reiser did it of the Netherlands. Yufe Pan, the latest to try. Uh, Jong Won Chon, that was the only one that stopped him. I have to say, looking at Jong Won Chon, three flashes and four zones. Uh, you'd be pretty amazed if that didn't get him through. Here goes Jan Hoyer again. So, as I said, it's difficult to compress yourself and fiddle around with your hands in front of your face when you're as tall as Jan, but he gets around it by going out right direct to the crib. I'm surprised to see him fall there. He had a good, good right hand, perhaps couldn't quite find the body position. Phillips. So that'll be her safely up to the zone once more. And we've seen that one top by Virginia Kasbekova. We're seeing Alex Megos now on the crimps with 25 seconds to go. Left and right hand land. Top for Alex Megos. He left it late but found a way. Yeah, a nice moment. Big fight. Crowd really got behind him. You can see him powering out on, on multiple attempts. He's getting really close there on women's number as well. That's good to see as well. Yeah, you can see his legs getting more and more tired, his arms powering out at the bottom of that. Struggled to make the dyno a couple of times, but just dug so deep for the top. Uh, Julia Shanordi, we didn't see that much of her on number one. Makes her way out, Adam Ondra is climbing on uh, number two. First chance to have a look at Gregor Vazonic. Went really well yet here yesterday. Again, you talk about highlight moments from the last few seasons at the IFSC. Gregor Vazonic winning his first World Cup in Munich last year has got to be right up there. Um, 
extraordinary moment. He was very emotional. You might remember him. He had his head, uh, hand over his face on that final boulder. Just couldn't believe what was happening to him. And here he is, nine months on, having another go and went very well in the qualifiers. I think he's really got something to prove as well. He's st struggling a little bit this season. Well, I think there was a lot of talk that specialists who weren't doing the combined, like Gregor, might have a lot of really good results. And it hasn't quite happened for him this season. But yesterday in the qualifiers, it really seemed to go well. He does seem to like climbing here in Munich. And for the rest of his life, this will be a very special spot for him. Adam Andre now. Slightly different method there at the bottom for Andre, having his hand round the right hand round the wrong way, effectively, but the right way for him. Cruising through that bottom section, different method completely through those volumes. And Andre is a bit of cruise control mode here at the moment. You yeah, could say earlier that this round really would suit his style. Two tops, two boulders for Adam Andre. He didn't flash the first one like John Wan Chon did, but he's got both of the first boulders done. He is on his way. Is he on his way to the final? Time will tell. But he couldn't have done much better than he has done so far. Still waiting for confirmation of what attempt that was from Adam, but it's certainly two tops on the first two boulders. Yuji Inoue there on number three. Here goes Gregor. This boulder still only top twice. It was flashed by John Wan Chon. Adam Ondra got it third go. Adam scores just flashed up. That was a flash on number two. Now two tops still gets you in currently in the top three at the moment. Tim Rauza, two tops, four zones. He's currently sitting in third position. Ondra's score when it updates might just adjust that. He's down seventh for the moment. It's just two, the two zones because he's only been on two boulders. But any quick top here could put you in a really good position. It's Gregor creeping out with the right hand. He's got a heel in place. The foot looked quite solid. Uh, here's Fanny Gibert. Excellent qualifying day. Matt, Mike, you and I were right next to her at the end of her qualifying run. The venue was packed. She got a humongous cheer when she topped the fifth boulder. Yeah, like we said, the, the Munich crowd is a very knowledgeable crowd and they can really appreciate when they see one of the superstars of the game Fanny back performing in front of them and yeah she had a really good qualifying round and, and she took a big bow at the end of the day and everybody was on their feet for her it was yeah it was a great moment and it was a great moment to see it for a qualification crowd quarter past one here in Munich this semi-final really drawing to a, a pretty tense finish we've seen just one top across the whole of the women's semi-final. It was that lady we're looking at now, Evgeny at Kazbikova, Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here with you, as we will be this evening for the final. It's always a special event here in Munich. Crowd will be huge. The light will be stunning across the Olympic Stadium. The action promises to be superb. The only question right now is, who are we going to be watching? Eugene Inouye took you a very heavy fall, face first onto the mats. How he got up from that so quickly, I have no idea. That was a WWE style. <laughs> uh, Alexei Rubsov there, won here uh, four years ago, Alexei. He's got two tops so far, Alexei. Both of them flashes in all four zones. Uh, may well be enough. He's currently sitting in third if it was to finish now. I think most climbers at the local gym, if they fell off like that, would be calling the nearest ambulance, I think of these guys to land and land successfully from that position but that's 110 percent commitment if there ever was one here goes julia shanardi we see her much more in the lead climbing but her boulders really come on it's big result after big result so far in 2019 fanny gibert her compatriot attempting that jump on number one yeah, women's number one is really interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing a couple of the climbers still to come out on that. Two climbers left still on women's 101, number one. It really just seems to be really difficult to generate any power out of the feet to go around the corner. Oskar of Pusic now and Angie Perhak get underway. The Slovenian takeover of this semi final continues. Nine climbers across both men and women, six in the men's side and three in the women. And Mia Krampel as well, also on the stage. 
Emily Phillips now, the latest to try her luck on women's three. It's not seen a lot of traffic. That would be an understatement. It's seen one person secure a zone. That was Katja Kadic. A top is almost certainly going to see anyone through to the women's final. Such is the difficulty of this round. Alex Megos now on men's four. Mia Krampel on women's four. Maybe Charlie, this will be an interesting moment uh, just to talk about a uh, conversation I had with the roots. Let's just come back to that. This is Jan Hoyer looking for a crucial top potentially on men's number two after no top on men's number one. Yeah, I mean, given the fact that only Jong Won Chon and Adam Ondra have done number one, I think you can get away without doing it, provided you get the job done elsewhere. And that's what Jan Hoyer seems to be doing. Oh, he's got himself in an awkward position there. Dare he release the right hand? Yes, he does. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, so I was just talking to one of the root with Yanya just about to come out. You know, she is the talk of the town at uh, pretty much every World Cup this season. And just saying, you know, how do you root set for Yanya? They said basically, we well, effectively pretend she's not here because she is a long way above everybody else currently in the current standings of the women's competition. Zanjay's looking really good here. Another Slovenian who's <laughs> really showing the, the force of the Slovenian team. Yeah, just basically saying that they, they almost set for everybody else and just to see what Yanya does. They want to create a show between setting for the top three, four, five female athletes. And uh, yeah, Yanya just kind of goes out there and does her own thing. Uh, and it, it, it's so important for them to set a, a good show for the rest of the field and not just focus on Yanya. But having said all of that, the show that they're setting for the women's here currently doesn't have much action. I think it's going to be the Yanya show. Well, we'll see. I mean, we, it sounds ridiculous, but you have to say you almost assume that she will do every boulder. But I have to say, if she does every boulder this time, it will be her most impressive performance probably the whole season so far. When you look at the caliber of climbers, these boulders are stopping. Yeah. Uh, of course, we are missing Akira Noguchi, Mihon and Naka, Petra Klingler, Shauna Coxey. But uh, even so, these boulders looking absolutely the living end. I would be very impressed if Yanni could find four tops here. But there's no way I'm going to bet against her. Tomowaki Takata now. He's on number three. This one's uh, relative to some of the other boulders. Seen a fair bit of traffic. A few tops coming on that one. He just seemed to rush that top section a bit. He was moving really fast. And Magos just slaps into that left-hand side of the volume. There's nothing there for the left hand. Crowd cheering on every move. This is looking really good for Magos. A real interesting sort of finishing move. Alex is quite far behind you. Alex Magos actually creeps up slowly with the left hand and then tried to bump into the bucket above. I think if he had his time again, and he probably will have his time again, provided he can repeat those moves, I think he might just go for that top move. Yeah, if he finds the top there, that would be huge because that will put him in the free top club, which is only the top two guys at the moment. Alex Magos is fighting for a position in finals here. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he's currently got two tops and four zones. He's in sixth place as it stands, but he's got Jan Hoyer, Adam Ondra, Angie Perhark, uh, Yoshiyuki Ogata still to come. A lot of people still to finish their rotation. So Alex, uh, as you say, really needs this if he wants to have a good chance to make it through to the final. Uskar Pusic now on number one. Again, big cheer from the German crowd as Alex Megos pulls back on. You just see in the background Angie Perhark, never afraid to express his emotions. Looked a happy man. He finds a top on number one. We'll try and get a replay for you at the end of the rotation. Megos does just drop off the wall, so the dream ending might not be there for him. This is where we saw Tomoaki really fighting before. He slows it down this time. Different hand sequence. It's looking much better. Desperate. Gaston Crimps at the top of the wall here. Just spins up again. Sliding down those crimps is a replay of Angie. Yeah, this is Angie lining it up at the top. Oh, as smooth as you like as he crossed through. Once he got that left foot solid, there's no way he's going to drop that. You're not allowed to use the top of the wall to top, but once you've uh, topped the boulder, you're welcome to use it to celebrate. And Angie did just that. Alexei Rubsov walks past us. He's uh, the highest ranked climber with only two tops. John Won Chon and Jakob Schubert, the only climbers with three tops so far. Yoshiyuki Ogata now gets underway, and Yanya Garnbrecht gets underway. They are the last climbers out, so these are our 20th. 
climbers out after they're done. We are finished with the first boulders. Now, can Yanya find a top on number one? We thought, and the route setters thought, that this number one, the women's one, would see a bit of traffic. It hasn't proved to be the case at all. But if there's anyone going to top it, let's be honest, it's probably Yanya Garnbrek. I have to say, Charlie, I'm really nervous watching Yanya. I'm nervous on behalf of the route setters. People are here expecting a big show here from Yanya. Let's see what she can do. Oh, she nails the jump. And your Garnbrek. Nobody's even attempted this last move on women's one, but she gets the jump done. She's got the top hold. She is on another planet in 2019. Think about the climbers that bowl has stopped. Think about the climbers that could barely do the first move. Just sit back and enjoy the end of the show. So impressive. Adam Andre now. Uh, it looks like he could do with getting that left foot involved. Looks to have found a way now. Has found a way. Adam Andre really smashing his way through this uh, semi-final. Yeah. He's got three tops on the first three boulders and may already have done enough. I think if he can get even a zone on number four, you'd have thought that would be him through. If there was any boulder in the tour that was going to slow down Adam Andre, it was a jump on men's number three in the end. No issues at all. That training he's been doing pre-season, working on the modern styles, obviously proved to be very effective. Julia Shanodi. Charlie, just three minutes to go. Go back to the women's number one there for a minute. There was an air of anticipation in the arena. You could really feel it as everybody effectively was just waiting for a top on women's number one. And it's the way that Yenya came out and did it. I mean, how, how, do, how can you describe such a situation? I think, uh, as we see, Julius not far off getting his own there, Julius Shanodi on number three. I, uh, I've heard some people say to me they, they don't like dominance in sport and um, as a general rule I'm inclined to agree as we watch Evgenia who uh, was the only climber with the top I, I am inclined to agree but I think in the case of Yanya it is just such a pleasure to watch and I've never seen a climber like her we may watch the IFSC for the rest of our lives and never see another climber like her I think you just have to sit back and try and enjoy it just savor it because you're never going to see anything like this again yeah, she's dominant, and yet she's a strong, strong favourite to win here, and she's won the first four World Cups of the season. But she's probably the best climber I've ever seen. If you can't enjoy watching that, I'm not sure this is a sport for you. You've just got to sit back, applaud, and enjoy. What can Yoshiyuki Ogata do? He's got, his, got himself over to the right, but he, he can't then find a way up onto the arets and uh, good fight on number four. Here goes Julia, number three. I have had somebody claiming a zone on it, but nobody's uh, really looked like getting much further than that. What we can say with relatively high probability is that we'll see a women in the finals with no tops, just zones to their names. Proves how brutally difficult this round is. Yeah, I mean, that looks an almost, almost a certainty now. It may well be a certainty. I haven't done the maths, but uh, it's got to be pretty close. Yeah, somebody almost certainly will be into the final without finding a top in the semi-final. Yuji yeah, Inoue, yeah, yeah, yeah. just seeing, about to run, hopefully, if we get, we get our uh, timing right, we don't, about to run onto number four. Here's Fanny Gibert on number two. Quite interesting how, basically, Yanya come out as the last climber out with one top, a flash to her name, she, all, she wins the round. Unless somebody else pulls something out of the bag here. It's very possible with climbers such as Fanny Gibert, Still on the women's number two. Just trying to match Yenya Kazbikova's fine top on that one. Yasuki Ogata, he can't find a way on this men's one. 25 seconds to go. As always, climbers in reverse order, so Yoshiyuki, after qualifying first, he's definitely not going to find a way. 14 seconds to go, Fanny Gibert going to need to find something special if she's going to top number two. And Evgenia Kazbekova is done on her rotation as well. Yanni Garnbrett has only been on one boulder and she's top of the scores. Yeah, I was just racking my brain. That's got to be a first, surely. Effectively, let's see what happens the rest of the round. Let's not count out the other climbers, but she could win the round after one attempt on one boulder. Crazy situation, crazy hard women's semi-finals here. 
absolutely brutal. Alex Johnson, if you were here with us earlier, heard saying it's one of the hardest semi-final rounds she's ever competed in. Alex Megos just walked past as he has now been bumped down to seventh place as we watch Oscar Pusic on women's two. Angie Perthark is just down and right of her. He'll be on number one. Oscar went really, really well in the qualifiers yesterday, winning her group. That cheer that you hear is for this. It's for Jan Hoyer. Showing the benefits of shoulder training. Somehow hung on to it when the feet cut loose and found a way on number three. Mike, you said it earlier. He lo really looks like he fancies it here at Jan Hoyer. And that'll be two top and three zones from the first three boulders for him. Yeah, that was crucial for Jan Hoyer. It's going to be close to three tops to get to him, but it's going to be the number of attempts is going to start to become crucial here as well. So for him to hold that double cut loose on the shoulders there could have been a big moment. We will see. Lutska Rakovic now on the absolutely savage women's three. Andrzej got it done on number one, and he's looking solid here on number two. Even the Slovenians, who are not easily impressed, will tell you just how strong this man is. Chooses to use a heel hook just to make life slightly easier as he crosses through, so now he needs to free up space for the right hand wasn't actually that accurate with the right hand went slightly too far but he did enough landed the first couple of fingers and that's two tops on two boulders for Angie interesting to see his emotion after the first boulder which is sort of pure celebration at the top of the wall topping the second boulder just a bit of a nod and thinks right game on it's time to focus Taking matters into her own hands, Luchka Rakovic. Here's a compatriot, Luska, trying a slightly different method. Facing out to the right. So much hip power needed on that sort of stemming move between those two volumes. Just bridged up between, there's so much force going through the hips. A lot of stability needed just to kind of keep the hands steady as you move up into those terrible Gastons. The ability to keep one part of the body moving whilst keeping the other bit stable is a very fine skill to try and develop. You might be able to hear the British team right next to us here at the left hand end of the Munich War giving plenty of encouragement to Emily Phillips. Well, they will know as far as you guys will as home at one top will put her directly into the finals, most likely. It's definitely worth fighting here for Emmy Phillips. The door is wide open for anybody to walk through it. She's left out there. Yeah, she's got one zone uh, so far. Depending on number of attempts, two zones uh, might actually see her into the final, believe it or not. I don't think it will due to number of attempts. Uh, but a top would certainly see her in. Emily Phillips getting plenty of encouragement. You can see Lutska Rakovic uh, in the distance on number three. And, uh, I wouldn't have thought the judges will award her that zone, but we'll see. Amazing how even zones at this stage. That's so important, just a couple of zones and you could be into the final. Two zones in four attempts is what gets you there at the moment. Interesting method here. Women's number two facing out. Trying something completely different. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a little a, wry smile. Well, I was thinking it's great to get started, but uh, it'd be pretty hard to climb those crimps facing out. But uh, certainly trying everything she can think of, Oscar. Interestingly, Emily Phillips with 35 seconds left, it was at the time, has walked off the mats on the final boulder. And, uh, 20 seconds to go to, for Oscar, and she does not fancy another go on that. Adam Ondra and Julia Shanodi in the call zone now ready to come out onto the Munich wall. Yanya Garmbrit is about to emerge back out. Yoshiyuki Ogata is about to head back out. Here comes Yanya. Less than half the field were able to secure a zone on women's one. Nobody topped it. Yanya flashed it. Already storming through. We could be halfway through the semi-final and she's already secured 
mathematically, no matter what anyone else does, top place in the final. So can she find a way? Can you're underway with four and a half minutes to go? She really, really enjoyed climbing harder boulders in the qualifiers yesterday. And she's definitely got a challenge here. Going up with the right hand straight up to the zone. This is the first attempt uh, from Yanya. This boulder has been topped. Evgenia Kazbekova got it done. It's the only boulder that had been topped before Yanya came out on the mats. And it's just that second to last hole that stops it. That's a pretty poor hold. The top one's pretty good. That is a very good first attempt from Yanya. I should point out, by the way, Evgenia Kazbekova flashed that boulder. So Yanya outperformed so far on boulder two. Yeah, she tried to have a high right foot there rather than going up to that next hold with the lower left foot. Uh, high left foot, I should say. But so let's just focus on Andre now. Andre's looking for the first time to get four tops in the men's competition. Currently in third position with three tops and three zones. Can he make it into the four top club on his own? Surely no doubt from here from Andre. It's an exclusive club, it's a club of one, Adam Andre. He's topped all of them here in Munich. He will be into the final. Crowd will be pleased to see that. Widely regarded as the greatest male climber of all time. And he is into the Munich final. Four tops, brilliant day from him. He said when uh, I saw him in Wujiang after he missed Chongqing with, with illness that he was fully fit again. There were no worries of any lingering illness uh, from towards the end of April and that's certainly proven to be the case here goes Yanya Garnbrett women's two this time she holds on to it just needs to sort the feet out or will she go from there she touches the top and she may wish she'd got the, the feet sorted out before she went yeah, she looks like she's having fun though she ended up having to jump for that because she was going off of the middle left foot to go towards the top see a quick top from Gregor as well also from Savinia yeah, Yanya just her confidence is so high, you can see her just flying for every single hold. She's just enjoying the fight out there. It'll be interesting to see if she uses a different foot method on her next go. Or whether she'll just pack up the tent with two minutes off and have a little cool down behind the back of the wall. Well, I mean, she's going into the final, isn't she? Uh, she I, I think she'll want to top these. She'll, she'll relish being given boulders like this to go at. But um, you have to think that Yanya may... If it feels like there's a potential to injure yourself in a boulder, we might see her uh, knock you on the head early. Yeah, Yanya's not going to give up on that boulder, I don't think. She's out there to put on a show now. That's Fanny G Bear on number three. Women's three just looks the next level, but let's see what she does this time. Can she find a top? Let's see what she does with the feet. Crucially, that seems to be the difference between her and Yanya Kazbekova at the moment on this boulder. Goes for the same foot sequence. Just lost sight of her. There she is. She's, she's solid on that second to last hold. This time she's got the left foot up and the right foot behind her. This looks promising for Yanya Garnbrett. Right hands there, as is the left. Two boulders, two tops. Only one of the climbers managed to get to the top of a boulder. Yanya's attempted to, and she's top two. Classic from Yanya there. Employ some technique rather than just trying to bash to the top and absolutely path the boulder. proves that she can fall off, mind you. She is human, just. Penny <laughs> Zibet then on women's number three. Nothing really to anybody's name on that one. Absolutely brutal set of five glass volumes up the steepest part of the wall here in Munich. Uh, very special guest, Evgenia Kazbekova. Successful flash uh, of number two. You're, there's only two climbers who've got a top. That must be the hardest semi-final round of the season. That would be, uh, also in Moscow, was something similar. <laughs> uh, that number two, nobody else has been able to do it. What was the What was the secret? I don't know. Actually, I thought it's not so hard, and I think it's very technical. So it's like uh, rock climbing. And uh, you have a f you will be in the final tonight. You have a few hours. What's the plan? You just rest and try not uh, try not to get too excited. Yes, yes, I will try. <laughs> First final. Well, congratulations, and it was fantastic to watch on number two. Thank you very much. Enjoy tonight. 
That was Evgenia Kaspikova. I said to her, actually, no one else has done it. Jan Jagamrit's now done it, but no one else flashed it. Jan, you took a few attempts. Really superb uh, effort from Evgenia. I think if you're, if you're talking about climbers who are potentially going to make a, a dent on the Olympic selection later on in the year, Jan has got to be right up there. Look, once again, you find the right boulder that suits your nuances, the technique that you really enjoy, it, it can get you a long way. Lutschka Rakovic, the latest to try her luck on number four. I mean, I think the crowd now really looking forward to seeing what Yanni Garmet can do on that number three. We still haven't seen anyone really get too close to it. Katja Kadic is almost certainly, uh, in fact, will be in the final with three zones, including that zone. It was crucial on number three. Uska's the latest to try her luck on it. Yeah, the other story playing out here is Jan Hoyer battling out on men's number four, trying to find her, his third top. Attempt's going to be crucial now, especially with people like Andrzej firing through the boulders right behind him. Adam Andre and Andrzej Perhatch looking like the two who are on form here at the moment this weekend. Easy again from Andrzej. Andrzej, three boulders, three tops. We had a Slovenian man win his first World Cup in Munich last year. Could we see it again? We've seen this man win in Munich. Could we see that again? Jan Hoyer absolutely smashing his way through these boulders. Huge moments coming one after the other here. Jan Hoyer just gets his third top. We did say it was a big moment and the crowd responded. Let's have another look. This is him through this bottom section here, Jan Hoyer. Jan Hoyer is going into the final. He'll have another chance to win in Munich. Interesting there. Had the toe hook round on the right hook, dropped it to a hill to stabilise on this top section. And had the power on that top section off the left hill to find a nice top. Look at that from Jan Hoyer. And that's what he was celebrating in front of the venue now absolutely rammed. Yes, it's just fantastic. There is something so special about this Munich World Cup. And now, the climbers who are left on the mats have to find some way of dialing it down, calming down and concentrating on their own performance. In the men's competition, Alexei Rupsov is just clinging on there into sixth place, two tops, four zones. Two tops in two attempts, four zones in nine attempts. Yeah, I think uh, might be getting slightly nervous now, Gregor Vazonic on his way. We haven't actually seen that much of, of Gregor today. It's, uh, there's, the wall is so busy with eight climbers out there at a time, you can sometimes feel like you almost lose track of people, and, and Gregor's been one of those climbers today, but he's quietly got two tops and three zones on the first three boulders. Yeah, I don't think Yoshiyuki is going to be upsetting the score is too much, unfortunately as well, two yeah, bowlers out for him, no tops. Yeah, I think uh, Gregor who can knock him out, but uh, yeah, really, really heavy duty men's final line up at the moment. Women's still very open with such minor amount of adjustments to the scoreboard to see through to the final. Oskar Rapusic is not able to find a way on number three. Absolutely no shame in that. To be honest, it looks hard enough just getting the first move done. Uh, but yes, Gregor is the man who could knock Alexei Rubsov out. Angie Perhark is already in the top provisional six. He's in fifth place as it stands right now. <laughs> Big cheer from the crowd there. And it turned into a groan. Looking down the stage, I'm not sure who they were watching. Yeah, it was just on bold number four, Lutschka. Nearly secured the zone hold. I do know, unfortunately, it's definitely not over once you've got the zone. But zones and temps zones are actually really important here in the women's competition. So looks good goes again with 10 seconds remaining. And she's got the zone. Can't quite stay there. I think she'll probably be awarded that. 
she was on there a long time. And as I mentioned earlier, look at that crowd here in Munich. I think this evening it could be, believe it or not, even fuller, but there's probably fit a few more people in at the ends of the crowd. Yeah, the match is stacking up here pretty fast, and Fanny Hubert could change that, but I think that zone there from Lutschko could put a three-way tie in currently for his fifth place. Fanny Gibert out, Gregor Vazonic out. Gregor uh, needs to do it in not many attempts, but pretty much gunning for a place in the final. If he can find the top. Here goes Janja. Remember, nobody has topped this boulder. To be perfectly honest, nobody's come close to topping this boulder. Janja safely up to the zone. Heel hook in place, up with the left hand. The Munich crowd really beginning to react now. They know they're watching one of the all-time greats. We're all watching one of the all-time greats. And Janja Garnbrek tops the boulder. The, the best in the world, the creme de la creme, could barely get off the floor on. This is, this is climbing not from another planet. This is from another galaxy from Janja Garnbrek. Uh, to be honest, Charlie, I'm absolutely speechless. Just spine tingling moment once again from Yanni Gumbert. It's just, I just can't imagine that she can fall off. Absolutely mesmerizing stuff from Yanni Gumbert. It's not even in the final, this is a semi final display of absolute force. And I have to say, when people say, oh, I, I don't like dominance, I'd like to see some other winners. I'd like to see more of a show. If somebody can tell me what is a better show than watching the best climb you've probably ever seen on hard boulders, then please tell me what that might be, because to me, this is just incredible to watch. What's amazing is these are top from Yoshiyuki Ogata, but he still figure. These are hard boulders, and Yanyu Gambre is making them look easy. That's the crucial element. Nobody got anywhere near even the bottom section of that boulder and smashed it, and flashed it with ease. Well, they say you've mastered a skill when you make it look easy. Uh, Fanny Gibert now. And will no doubt have witnessed that. She's uh, stood less than 10 metres where you can actually see part of women's three. She'll have seen what Yanya just did. Uh, could do with the zone here, Fanny. That would really uh, remove any last minute worries for her scores wise. I think she's already made it anyway. Gregor Vazonic really needs something here, though. Yeah, big moment here for Gregor. He's got to follow Jan Hoyer's footsteps here. Try and get into the free top club. Yeah, actually, I've just had another look at the scores. Yoshiyuki can't make it. Uh, this is a straight shootout now between Alexei Rubsov and Gregor Vazonic. If Gregor can find the top, he's in. If he can't, it's almost certainly going to be Alexi. I'm just looking at it to uh, actually come down to attempt. And yeah, it will be Alexi if Gregor can't find a way. So need to top, nothing else will do for Gregor if he wants to repeat the heroics of 2018 where he claimed his first and so far only World Cup win. Sun is beating down now here in Munich. Beautiful conditions. And Fanny Gibert is creeping out right, looking for a way she could really, really do with this zone on number four. Just to make it certain, just to remove any stress, but she's not there. It seems to be the speed of the roll over there from Fanny Gibert. She just, we heard from Alex Johnson, really need a bit of height to kind of land down on that big round sloping volume. Only a couple of people have really secured it. Should we have another good look? It's really quite interesting. The brushes are really brushing it, but they, ca they can't get down the back of the hold with the angle of their brushes that they really need to. I don't think that's helping the situation. So the final slot in the men's final up for grabs now. Greg Overzonic giving this bowler absolutely everything he's got. Goes up with the right hand. This for a place in the final for Gregor. He has to find the top. The zone won't do anything. Goes up with the left hand. Somehow drops back down. And with 30 seconds to go, he is not going to have the time or the energy to try again. That must be so frustrating. Well, I think he is going to try again. But I think this is a race against time, which he does not have the time to complete. Huge emotion there. You could see as his fingertips creeped off the finishing hold, his spot in the final just creeped away with them. He's going to be absolutely broken after that. 
Yeah, let's see it again. I have to say, I really thought he'd done it. He just missed with the left hand and he couldn't, he'd committed enough that he couldn't come back. Yeah, he committed his right hand into matching on that volume rather than leaving it down left and controlling a heel hook around the back of that volume. A heel or a toe probably would have worked for him. He almost rushed the top section. When he looks back at that replay, I think he's going to be really upset with himself. So Angie Perhak is safely into the final from here on out. It's only deciding the starting order. Oskar Pusic now climbing. And just looking down at where uh, Yoshiyuki Ogata is, even if he was to find a top, he'd have two tops and three zones. It wouldn't be enough. We do have our men's final decided. Angie Perhart leaving absolutely nothing on the mats, but he's already found a way through. He's currently in fifth place. Uh, could move up to second place if he was to find a top. It would be four tops for him if he did. As it is, Adam Ondra, the only climber with four tops. Jan Hoyer just walked behind us. Probably quite sensibly from his point of view, just ignored us so he didn't have to do an interview, but I'll try and catch his eye a second time. Uh, safely through as well. Yeah, Andre is safely through here and talking to him yesterday said he really didn't enjoy coming out uh, first into the finals or, or the best way to describe that, coming out last coming in the finals last, having in first, been first, yeah, first, having in, the been in first position because there's so much pressure because you can't ignore what's going on in the arena and much prefers it when your pressure's off a little bit coming out you know, in sixth, fifth or fourth position, that's much nicer. So depending on the number of attempts here, if he does find a top he'll be probably just sitting behind Adam Andre, so that'll be preferable for him. A uh, very special guest joining us in the commentary box here, Jan Hoyer. That must have been amazing turning around to the Munich crowd. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Um, nice. No. Coming out on the first boulder in semi-final and uh, hearing my name screamed definitely uh, made me be in the, in the right mood to flash boulders 2-3. I didn't flash this last one, that pisses me off. I can't believe I fell on the run and jump. <laughs> but uh, what's it like climbing in front of this home crowd? More exciting, more pressure? Do you climb, you seem, seem like you climb better in front of them. I definitely love big crowds. Uh, I think um, it adds some excitement and pressure, but uh, I find myself climb better, if anything, with a lot of people that are just cheering. A lot of friends and my family here, so definitely a good comp to um, get through all the way to final. Well, I know everyone at home will be looking forward to seeing on the live stream, but I don't think anyone will be looking forward to it more than the Munich crowd. It's going to be something very special here tonight. <laughs> well, after my win in 2017, I saw that, well, I knew it's never going to be any better than this, but having a chance to just experience the same crowd the same atmosphere one more time like uh, a nice a really nice gift to my uh, season i was happy with anyways even before this comp okay well it sounds like you're in a in a good place mentally and we can't wait to see you tonight really looking well, forward to it hey cheers as i told you but as i told you i'm not going to win tonight i'm going to win the veil world cup well so, so you tell me <laughs> hey both would be nice no nah, i uh, don't want to be greedy i only take veil <laughs> thanks man that was Jan <laughs> Apologies for the uh, language there from Jan, <laughs> but uh, a very excited man. Yeah, just that was a slight in joke. I said to him yesterday, you, you winning tomorrow, Jan? And he said, no, no, I'm, I'm going to win Vail. So, uh, the funny thing is, it's hard to know if he's, if he's joking or not. You know, he could easily win Vail, he's won there before. And don't let him tell you he's not greedy. If he can win both, he'll, uh, he'll do everything he can. Oskar Rapusic now on number four and Angie not finding a way on number four. I wonder if uh, Angie's got a pretty good inkling. Uh, he may do that. He uh, he doesn't need this one. I remember Yanya saying in the World Championships last year, when you know you don't need it, you just haven't got that extra percent of desperation that gets you over the line. You might remember in the last boulder in the World Championships in Innsbruck, she couldn't top it. Uh, but she knew she'd already won and you could tell when she came out she knew the job was done and perhaps the same is true here of Angie hasn't got that tear it off the wall desperation but it matters not he's in the final yeah, hopefully somebody in the crowd's just giving him the thumbs up no need to wreck himself any more than you have done already he'll be ha quite happy going through into the final in fifth place coming out second tonight quick high five to Yanya on his way off Team Slovenia onslaught will be there once again tonight. 
Okay, so we already have our final as Uska Rapusic heads in and now we sit and watch the Yanya Garnbrecht show continue once again on this boulder. It has not been topped. A mere six of the best climbers in the world have managed to find a zone. Is anybody sitting at home really going to bet that Yanya is not going to do it? We shall see. We're about to find out. Four and a half minutes ago, Yoshiyuki Ogata joins her on the mats. Uh, he can't make the final, the men's final, just as we keep an eye on Yanya. She actually falls on the first move. Well, interesting, she's gone straight into a jump into the mantle there rather than sort of statically pressing into it. I think she'll have, a, potentially have another look at that. It looked quite brutal, actually, the way she's just sort of slapped into the wall. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier about Yanya in, in uh, the World Champs last year. I wonder if the same thing is true here, it, albeit slightly different emotions, but just the relief of knowing you've, you've made it without um, really any stress on her part. Well, I think she's out there for fun at the moment. You can tell she's not really into it anymore. So the men's final will be Adam Ondra, Jong Won Chon, Jan Hoyer, Jakob Schubert, Angie Perhark, and Alexei Rubsov. Wow. Five World Cup winners and Angie Perhark, who's looked immense all season, hunting his first win. So many storylines in that men's final. For now, though, we're watching one of the greats on the women's side, if not the greatest of all time, already being talked about in that breath, uh, Yanya Garnbrecht. She's certainly been the greatest this afternoon here in Munich. Three tops and only one other climber could even manage a single top. She's absolutely smashed this semi-final and she's got the zone on number four. Can she convert it into a top? Needs to get the feet involved or will she just try and smear on the wall? Now she finds a heel hook. Goes up with the right hand, somehow holds onto it, just corrects the left hand, and now Yanni Garnbrecht lining up the top hold. What a tour de force from Yanni Garnbrecht. 18 climbers came out and couldn't find a top. One other climber could find one top. Yanni Garnbrecht can climb, can find four. What on earth is anybody supposed to do with this apart from sit back, watch, and enjoy? How can you stop that? How can you compete against it? whole load of competitors to Yanya just standing around and shaking her head what can we possibly do to try and beat Yanya the way that she stuck the zone hold was impressive but the next move tucked the right heel into that underside that she's got a right hand in right there and somehow on this next move sticks the slot she was absolutely on the living edge and still managed to carry on towards the top look at this move here Hits it, just holds the right hand, body completely rotates once, twice, adjusts it, and at that point there, there's no doubt Yanya Garnbrecht is going to find four tops. Another incredible moment. She didn't even find the good bit with the right hand. <laughs> she missed. Well, I mean, anybody that gives the root setters a hard time when they look at this score sheet for the women and they see that only two climbers have got tops, spare a thought for them, setting for Yanya Garnbrecht. Uh, it's it's a dilemma really that the root setters have got to face from a spectator's point of view it pretty much defines first world problem <laughs> but they have to find a way to set a boulder that challenges Yanya and gives everyone else a chance and to be honest it would appear that those two things are mutually exclusive yeah in many ways in root setting we always talk about the show the show for the people at home watching you guys on the live stream the show for the people in the arena for many ways the best show is to have lots of people fighting towards the top of the boulders but as we're talking about at the top of the top of this live stream I want to see Yanya actually try and this set of boulders made her try and that was a very impressive show I'm happy with that four tops in both the men's and the women's competition really really impressive job by the root setting team well I mean if anybody isn't happy with the root setting feel free to tell me what you would do because you have to set for Yanya and you have to set for everyone else and I don't know how you do both of those things at the same time and it would appear despite what the root setters said for you, that they ended up, may have been inadvertent, they ended up setting for Yanya. And I personally think it was a great show because you are watching one of, if not the best climber of all time, fighting hard on desperate boulders. Yeah. Yanya aside, I think the root setter is going to be reflecting quite hard on this semi-final round. You know, we're only going by what they discussed with us before the competition started, but I think the women's semi-finals are quite a bit harder than they were expecting. They did tone it down even a little bit just before the competition started but I think they'll be having a, a good look at that over the next two hours because a really short window to make the changes ready for the final round it's not meant to be for Yoshi Yuki today unfortunately he doesn't make it through it does end a spectacular semi-final round 
Yes, so uh, on the women's side, it will be Yanya Garnbrett, Evgenia Kazbekova, Kaci Kadic, Mia Krampel, Julia Shanordi, and Fanny Gibert. Three Slovenians, two French, and a Ukrainian safely through on the women's side. Could be a fascinating final, that. Uh, Fanny Gibert still awaiting that first win. Julia Shanordi, who we've seen in league climbing, really, really coming strong in the bouldering. Mia Krampel and Kaci Kadic, again, still waiting for that first win. And Evgenia Kazbekova, who absolutely cruised women's two. Even Yanya couldn't flash it. Uh, in her first final. So a lot of storylines on both the men's and the women's side. No doubt who this semi-final was about, to be honest. There's no doubt who this entire women's bouldering season has been about. She will be in action tonight. She'll be coming out last in front of an enormous, passionate Munich crowd. We'll wait for the results to be confirmed before we head off air, but do join us later on. Promises to be quite a show. Here are the results. Yanya Garmrit for bowlers uh, for tops. If Kanya Kazbikova, the only other climber in the semi final who could find a top, and then Kachi Kadic safely through his three zones. And as it turned out, two zones was enough. Mia Krampel, Julia Shanodi, and Fanny Zibar uh, safely through. Vita Luke and Camilla Moroni, Luchka Rakovic, and Alex Johnson uh, narrowly missing out. Uh, so a bit, uh, a, look, a bit lower down the order. Van der Mikko Kova, Jesse Pilz, Matteo Putzi, Nanako Kura, Emily Phillips, and uh, Victoria Meshkova, the climbers who got zones. And sadly, nothing for Johanna Ferber, hometown hero, Afra Hennig, uh, Oceana McKenzie, and Uska Rapusic. Over on the men's side, only one climber with four tops. It was Adam Ondra. Jong Won Chon will join him in the final. Three tops for him. Uh, Jan Hoyer, Jakob Schuber, Angie Perhark, and Alexi Rugsov. Also in the final, Tim Royce narrowly missing out, ended up in seventh. And Greg Orvazonik, he had the chance to take that place in the final, ends up eighth. Misha Pekoroaz and Alex Megos rounding out the top ten. Uh, Yone Kruder, the season champion from last year, he was 11th. Yufei Pan, Nikolai Uznik, Nathan Phillips, Yoshiyuki Ogata, Billy Ryle, Yuji Inoue, Tomoraki Takata, and Album Levy and Teisei Ishimatsu, the remainder of the top 20. Uh, so, Mike, I don't know where to start in that semi-final. Another tour de force from Yanya Garmrit. She's going to take some stuff in tonight. Yeah, to be honest, <laughs> what can you say? I mean, it's absolutely It is getting to that stage with Yanya Garmrit where adjectives are not doing the job. I'll try and grab a word of her before the final, uh, ask her how she's feeling, but I think we've already seen how she's feeling. But uh, do join us. We'll be live about 4.30 for a 5 p.m. start for the finals here in Munich. We look forward to seeing you there.